And they just also- they scroll they scroll through shit or look at the default grid. Yeah. And like my brother would like greatly benefit from it. The 4K player, he only plays like he spams like usually in every meta. He only spams like four carries and like four mids. Yeah, loads of people don't know. I was really surprised. Uh, and I um, about this but yeah. There's a bloody customized grid button right next to it, so that's like pretty much the first thing you would notice. I've known about this since <laughs> day, day one, but the moment. Well, I, pl- I I have to admit, I played like 1,500 to 2,000 games before I realized it, or like 1,500. I, but, I, have um, to, I have to admit, I did not know you could resize it um, by zooming in and out. I, I, I didn't know that for a little while. Uh, oh, I you didn't know that already yet? I didn't know it until. I mean, I'd seen people do it to about a couple of few months ago, I think. Okay. I saw Admiral Bulldog screen, and it was, like, bizarrely huge. And I, it didn't really register, but and then I saw your screen, I believe. Uh, and I think your, uh, you know, when, when you shared your account, uh, I saw yours, and that was huge. And that's when I actually <laughs> realized that you actually can scroll the mouse wheel and make it big or small. But I never really nice. needed it, so I never, never... You know, it, it never occurred to me, but yeah, it's like quite kind of decent feature. Like you can uh, reduce the size of the heroes that you're not playing, so you don't really have to put them off the grid. And actually, I'll, I might actually do that for my screen to improve it. Anyway, <laughs> getting into this. Well, uh, um, uh, hey, I was wondering, um, are you recording already, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um. So yeah, like I just wanted to say for your viewers and stuff, like, uh, because I already told you this outside of the video that I um. I basically made this grid for myself, and and I picked these heroes, um, based off of one. Like I did not pick the heroes that I did not want to play. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I strictly picked the heroes that, like, if you go into Dota buff and go under heroes and meta, you can look at everything by bracket, which you already know that. Yeah. I'm just saying it for the video. Um, and then you can organize it by pick rate, win rate, and stuff like that. Well. I, all these heroes within their positions on the five positions there are um, only picked because they have a high pick and win rate mm-hmm. in all five brackets on, on that thing. Yeah. And so, to me, that makes sense because clearly the heroes keep working at a higher level because if you're a better player, you can play them even better. Like, yeah. well, eh, and they might fit a different bracket for different reasons too i mean well, but the, but my it. point is just like they work in my bracket obviously yeah. and then if i get really good at them and deserve to go up in mmr they'll be good to climb with as well, well any hero if you get really good at it and attacker right. is a prime example like the guys on the 8k <laughs> playing a shit hero right arguably yeah. a shit hero. like most people will agree that it's not really that strong a hero it's got a strong yeah. suit but it's not really a conventional <clears throat> strong hero anyway um so well um i will say real quick though that like um um in every game i'm gonna try to pick carry and if i and if someone clicks it um then i'll like quickly yeah. click mid and then i'll quickly click off lane yeah. but if it looks like i'm generally gonna try to pick like fourth or fifth pick mm-hmm. even though i selected where i wanted to go right away and then if my team team seems like they're picking some jacked up thing like four carries, then I'd probably go like a, a support that would fit that game, like you know whatever it needs to be. Um, okay, so talking about these, first thing is that we'll, we're going to talk about the carries first, right? This is your main hero pool. This is what you want to spam a lot. So I would actually say you should have a little bit more. Like you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, you can potentially have three more here to fit in a few more scenarios. You can have Ursa here, maybe. Um, you can Ursa? Have, yeah, you can have Ursa and oh. either here. Well, I, I put of- him in the jungle over here. Um, I figured, like, I can still use, like, if I have to, I can use Wraith King or, or Lifestealer or Ursa. Yeah, you don't want uh, a jungle Wraith King at all. Uh, and you don't want a jungle Lifestealer either. Uh, Ursa right. is pretty much the only hero that you can, uh, you want to jungle. Anyway, uh, so those are the th- those are the three that you can actually put here, including uh, uh, Wraith King. So that's your ten okay. for your carry lane. Sven, fantastic. Uh, Drow Ranger. Uh, uh, I mean, you can get away in your bracket by playing her the way you do, but I think if you go higher up, it'll be really tough to play Drow Ranger without a full. Yes, so, I think so too. I have to change the way I play her, but like the Drow and Luna, there they're smaller icons than the than the Jug because I generally am. If my team can support some kind of push. Um, or like early mid game like uh, um, team composition. I'm gonna go to them before the uh, before like going way down the line. 
Luna because doesn't, doesn't need a push pad. Luna actually scales super well. Uh, yes. In the late game, and she's a really, really great carry. The only issue she has is the first 10 minutes uh, of the game. Very similar to Drow, uh, first 10 minutes. Very similar to Stark. Very similar to Spectre. Very similar similar to, um, what's his name, Morphling. Like, she's a regular carry. Like, most regular okay. carry ever. She's not got any self, so, sort of self-sustain. Uh, she's got a decent nuke. She's got, she's got <clears throat> nice farming capabilities, but she has... No survivability, so she needs some uh, support who can uh, stick with you in lane. And same goes for Drow Ranger, same goes for Morphling, Snark, and Spectre. Uh, Jug and Sven are the two exceptions here. So if you have a horrible support or no support, then that's that, those are the two heroes that you want to go to. Juggernaut. Unless I go to like, I could, uh, without a support, could, do, would you, I, I find that I do okay with Lifestealer sometimes. just cause I, it was... I don't know, because I can't actually play Lifestealer without a support at all. Uh, in the lane, yeah. it's, it's really, really tough. You need so much. Life Stealer is, is the pro the problem with Life Stealer is that he has no catching up farming capabilities, right? If you That's fall true. behind in farm in the early game, <clears throat> if the enemy is able to zone you out in the lane, and then you basically just screwed because you're gonna spend the next 15 minutes of the game. After the first 10 minutes, you're gonna spend another 15 minutes farming your crucial items and then that's 25 minutes into the game where you haven't had any presence at all and then you've lost the lane the game because your team has been 4v5. So. Yeah, I'm starting to not like him as much unless I have like a tri-lane or something that Absolutely. can just snowball him. Absolutely, and that's why Lifestealer is so strong because you put him in a tri-lane, he has got super kill potential, uh, he's got great sustain, He's uh, he gets all the farm that he needs and with farm, Lifestealer is extremely strong. So that's the drawback of Lifestealer here. That's the only drawback of Lifestealer really. To be honest, uh, farming um, speed. Quick thing it. though, um, I what I noticed on Dota buff, and it's strange because heroes like Luna, Wraith King, um, in previous metas, like heroes like Luna, Wraith King, Drow, uh, all of them, they had like really low pick rates, but they had decent, good high win rates. But right now, um, the Drow and Luna have just as high or higher pick rates than like um, Sven, but have higher win rates than Sven. Yeah, because so I, this, why? Is very, this is very much the push, so, somewhat push strat, but very much an illusion strat, um, and also a very much a draw strat. So you pick uh, any sort of Manta heroes or Shadow Demon or anything like that, and then you basically. It, the but this is like really, really my my. But two to three K, like it's not even very common that people counter or like pick uh, compositions. They just kind of pick what they felt like playing, or. Yeah, but they're gonna make Manta though these guys well yeah no no i know but i'm just saying like i see how luna like in my in my bracket could uh you know go into full-on carry or or they do some stupid thing like ags build and they just like nuke down everybody a few times and then their whole team wins because they have three carries on their team and mm -hmm. like i don't know i mean i i don't know why like luna and drow do so much better than for example Dr jug juggernaut um or Slark. I think you know, it like... comes back to the farming speed thing. Uh, yeah. Even if you've had a rough lane, which you know you always gonna have a rough lane because it's always <laughs> a dual core line, a dual off lane, and your supports don't really know how to do well. And mm -hmm. uh, heroes who can farm fast uh, and farm the jungle, catch up. Uh, they are really really strong. Uh, Slark can catch up as well, but people really don't know how to tread switch, and without tread switching, you can't really farm fast on Slark because you have no mana. Gotcha. Um, and Sven is really good for catching up. Luna is really good for catching up. Drow can catch up really easily as well because after level 6, she gets super good <clears throat> farming capabilities. You put any sort of lifesteal on her. Uh, it's just a mask of death, actually. And then you can literally jungle her really, really fast as well. So okay. that's that's the other thing. Uh, I do see um, most of the teams that I lose against that play Drow usually end up having a mask of madness. So I'm like, what is that freaking yeah. noob shit? That but is... you would actually recommend it. Like, not Mask of Madness. I wouldn't recommend Mask of Madness because it actually reduces. Just Mask of Madness. Squishy and she, you reduce her health even more. Twenty-five by twenty-five percent. It's just too much. So I definitely wouldn't. Uh, just a casual Mask of Death is really good. Uh, okay. If you really want to upgrade it to something, then I would recommend Helm just so that uh, you can upgrade it to Satanic later on, and you can also start stacking and. You know, get nags and oh, super so fast farm, something like that. If you don't think that you're going to, and I know that you're trying to like go through this list, but I thought that since it's a 
maybe a couple hour session that we talk about different things and uh, so i'm sorry if i'm uh, no. stopping you. um <clears throat> but i'm gonna have questions like drow um so the mask of death is usually enough um if so if i don't want to stack and i um don't want to and i don't think i'm gonna go late enough to get a satanic um, then you would never build the mask of death into um, a Helmadam? No, probably not. Okay, because she already has the armor from her agility scaling, right? Uh, there's absolutely no point at all. No point okay. at all. I, I'm going to leave know. mask of death, just casual mask of death, for a very, very long time up until, unless I know guarantee that I'm going to get lots of space and lots of time and that, uh, that I should make um, helm. I think there's only been one game where I've actually gone helm, stacked the, stacked the ancients uh, five times, stacked other camps, started stacking other camps. Uh, by the time I got ags, I pretty much just went brown boots, helm, ags, which is a pretty strange build. You would, you would think that it actually worked out really well because I wow. stacked the ancients five times, I stacked uh, the big camp uh, five times, I think. And I think by that time I got my ags, farmed those things really, really fast, ca caught up on my farm. Kept stacking, I think 25 minutes or yeah, something like 25 minutes I had ags and then the next uh, 10 minutes I kept farming and uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty decent. I think uh, we went on to lose the game, <laughs> but uh, oh. that's besides the point. Um, actually, actually, that's not besides the point. That is the point that by the time you get ags, it's so late already. Um, yeah. You're not very useful in fights. You're pretty much just farming, so it's not really beneficial. So I found like the best success I had on Drow is if I have the opportunity to just get like treads and a dragon lance, and then um, quickly. Well, usually I can take the off lane tower if I'm a safe lane yeah, Drow within before I even get more than treads. But like, yeah, no, well, um, it, but then it, and then treads. usually like the only time I win with Drow, not the only time, but like the best my biggest win rate is when i like quickly do that with treads and then i quickly tell my whole team to go to their um enemy safe lane and take that tower out and by the time i take that down i have a dragon lance and then from there we just keep 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 going forward and then if my team decides not to listen to me and just go off and farm then a lot of times we'll end up losing yeah absolutely. But, that's exactly how you play with dragon in fact once you get treads by the time you get treads you should be level six or you even have treads and maybe something else by the time you get level six and that's usually when you want to start to push and if you see that the enemy team has good defenders and if they are putting a lot of emphasis on defending your tower and your team has some sort of a composition where they can't really early push and it's not a good draw lineup that's the only time where you you know you can't take towers, you can't push. There's no point getting uh, treads, dragon lands because you're not going to be pushing too much. You're going to have to be farming. So that's the point where you decide, okay, I have to get a mask of death because, uh, or morbid mask as it's as it's called now. Yeah. You want to get a morbid mask, and then you just want to go to the jungle and, and farm that. And even then, you don't want to spend too much time there. You want to get your uh, treads, dragon lands. Uh, you're going to have a mask of death. You're going to have a a kill, of course. Um, don't know why we skipped out to Kila. You but no, have... but but after that, those three items, like no more small items, right? You're just yeah, farming for yeah. the big items. Then you, then you, well, after Dragonlance, then you're pushing. Then you have to push. You have no other choice. Like, oh, sure, you, yeah. sure, you're gonna go for a. Um, uh, maybe you can try to go for an Ags build. Maybe you can try to go for a Manta build. Maybe you can go for a Maelstorm to get some faster farming speed. But you're gonna start pushing after that. Is you can't. Well, no. Um. I thought you were leading into saying what would happen if the early game failed, then you would go and well, you, form you up bigger go, items. Like no, no, you, you want to, so you want to start pushing as soon as you get level six. You're probably going to have just right. treads by that time. You're not going to have a dragon land. You want to aim to get that first tower in before 10 minutes uh, as soon as you turn level six. But if that fails or if it seems like that's not going to be possible, then you want to attempt to go for a uh, morbid mass because you need to still farm and you need to get your farm up from the jungle. Uh, you're going to have to rotate to the jungle because you can't get take the tower and there's too many heroes in the lane, there's two or three heroes in the lane and they're constantly pressuring you or something like that is happening. Any any reason for you not to be able to push the tower, then you want to go for the farming, uh, farming thing because you then you need, uh, you know, Treads, Dragonlance uh, and, and Aquila and then you want to attempt to push again, but then you want to attempt a five-man push. Okay. Or a four-man push, and if that doesn't work out either, then again you want to stay in the jungle, farm up, you know, some more, farm up a big item. But your drow doesn't really take team fights, 
Uh, mm-hmm. She takes team fights in the in the sense that she's sieging towers, and that's that's the only time that there's a possibility of team fights. Rao doesn't go out looking <laughs> looking no. for kills with uh, with. Uh, it's in- too many too many problems. Yeah, I mean, unless like, unless it's the dumbest enemy team like for a Drow, you know. Yeah, uh, you'd be surprised how many people make uh, Lothars on Drow and start looking for kills like uh, like uh, they do links or something, but that just doesn't work. A Drow is not made for that. Um, so, um, as far as Luna, though, um, it's pretty much the same kind of deal, except you decide whether you want to do HOD stacking or not. I think with Luna, you always like, want right to do HOD stacking. You always, always want to do HOD stacking. The only difference between Sven and Luna is that Luna is going to complete her treads before making HOD, and Sven doesn't really need to. Actually, uh, okay. Uh, oh, because Luna's too squishy without the treads? Absolutely. Or... Too if much you watched my last Sven game, I had uh, I didn't go brown boots. I went straight for Helm of Dominator because I had a tri lane. Oh, I do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, go I ahead. Had, sorry. Uh, I had HOD at four minutes, and I was stacking from four minutes on, and it was just a complete destruction game. We had uh, all three racks by twenty four minutes. I'll pull it up while we're watching while we're while we're talking. I'll tell you. Yeah, like, uh, so but, um, that's that's Sven. You know, you can go, you can do that, but with Luna, you can't because she's just so squishy. You want to have treads. And you want to keep them on strength treads. Like, don't even bother putting them on agility for that extra nine damage. It's just not worth it. You already got loads of damage for last hitting and whatnot. So not even if you're farming jungle because you can just die so quickly. Having that 200 extra HP could mean you can get your alt off and you know get so, some hits. I mean, off. you get your treads, and then you probably want to get your Morbid Bass before you get your Helm of Dom. I mean, Helm of Iron Whale, so that you can farm. It's up to you. It's really up to you. It doesn't really matter. I usually, I almost always exclusively go for the Morbid Mask before uh, uh, um, Helm, because, because before, um, what's the other call? Oh. Sorry, the call? When the Helm of Iron Will? Or... Iron Helm of Iron Will, just because I'm used to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, before it used to give better stats or didn't have such good stats. The Iron Will didn't have that good stats, or I don't know. But uh, that's just, you know, uh, something I'm used well, to. Kind of stuff. Um, Okay, uh quick question. Uh sorry, sorry. Um the on Luna, um what was I gonna ask you? What how do you decide between whether you're going Glaives or uh or uh Lucid Beam build? If you have kill potential on your uh off laner, if you have that's it. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Some people will argue if you think you can uh TP into a different lane and you know, um Use alt. your yeah, use your alt or something to get loads of kills. If you have very immobile um, carry, for example, of the enemy team has a very immobile carry or something like. A and then maybe a support that doesn't have a stun or something yeah, like that. Yeah, then you can essentially get level seven. Yeah. Uh, at level seven, you TP into the off lane and you alt. You go in alt and then start pushing that tower or something like that. But I'm not really into that too much. I uh, I would rather just stick with. If I have kill potential on the offlaner, or if the offlaner is gonna harass me a lot, uh, then I want to decide like I'll just just nuke him constantly. And if that's not the case, or if I want to scale really really fast, I won't even bother putting. Uh, that's a really really greedy build, but it's it's it, it's a build that does work. You are somewhat like a Sven then. Um, and also, if the offlaner comes close, see if you have glaives maxed out. Yes, you will miss out on last hits. Like maybe if you practice Luna a lot, you might not miss out on last hits. Uh, okay, if you have, yeah. you know, maxing out glaives, maxing out her aura, um, it's pretty much just zero, well, zero four four. Um, everybody says that even when you max your, um, well, I've I've watched videos that say that like even when you're doing a glaives build. That you should usually um, before six get a uh, one point and you're stunned. Um, wait, four, five, six. No, hold on. Two, four, five. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. But by the time you hit a certain level or whatever, you should have uh, one, four, two, one. Because they said that going past number the second um, level of passive isn't really that, that worth it anymore. Well, um, that's where I would disagree. Compared to having one stun, like just to just to help you with a like a stop a TP or yeah, I, I or maybe slow down someone down coming after you or your teammate. <clears throat> yeah, I will definitely agree with that one. But then I have to argue, like, why do you want to put a point in ulti if you put one point in your in your uh, Q? Because if you got one point in your Q, then your ulti is complete waste of mana. It's almost better to not put 
no, not almost better. It is definitely better to not oh. point in your alt until you get level uh, three, at the very least level three in your queue. But then you have to understand is that uh, it's going to be quite late in the game because you've gone for a max slave build. So you want to, you can then not do that much damage with your queue. Uh, so it's almost like wait until you get four points in queue to max uh, to start putting points in your alt. So it's kind of a weird place. I've done that twice. Uh, it's worked out both times because I pretty much just go, went for, I think, one of the games. One of the games, it was just completely ridiculous. I had zero four four build, and I didn't have any ulti or any points <laughs> to I maxed out my um, uh, stats to level 18, and that's when I started putting points in Q because the enemy team had things like Huskar, things like Axe. They had, like, super tanky people that I just could, couldn't really nuke down or something like that. So there was, like, no point getting... getting uh, getting that so it was pretty much just a farm fest game and we knew we had late game so it was that sort of a game but that's like something that i would not recommend anyone do is something like you want to sometimes have a you have an idea and you're like oh i think this is gonna work and i know this is unconventional i'm gonna test it out just like something you're testing out so yeah. normal thing that you want to do is definitely max out q because obviously <laughs> even if you don't have too much kill potential on the enemy it is a huge, huge nuke coming from well, a carry, so... Can I tell you, twice now I've won with Luna, like, easily, because I saw that someone first picked an axe, because they like to do that in my bracket, just because, like, they're afraid they're not going to get him. Mm. Here's, like, axe, uh, Marana, um, Invoker, a PA. People first pick it, like, mm -hmm. constantly. Uh, they don't do it so much with Sven, but... But anyway, like, t there's twice now we've been partied with that with Genius, and she loves to play CM, so I... I and she likes to put her aura up, aura up fast. So I said, "All right, I'm gonna go Luna. And I'm gonna get a and, I, and, yeah. and and I and I told her to go CM because the axe picked. And, uh, and I don't know if this was smart or not, but it worked really well. And and I got a Bacillus right away because I brought a ring of protection and like tangos and a salve yeah. and like a, a circlet or something like that. But I immediately got a sage mask and a Bacillus and her mana regen, and I just nuked the fuck out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killed him over and over and over. I mean, she like frostbited it, and I'm like, <laughs> boom, yeah, boom, boom. It's pretty strong. The combo is pretty strong. Uh, all actually. Was the Bacillus uh, dumb or overboard? No, it was good. Because okay. You didn't make a kill anyway. Uh, also, I think Luna is. Uh, people don't really do this, but I think Luna is very much a mid hero. Uh, always has been. Uh, it's really. Very, uh, like you don't see it much in in high level games or in pro games but this was a thing a while ago um up until a while ago she was played very very much in the mid lane it was very strong same thing used to play it very much in the mid lane and uh she's so strong look at look at her how how well she scales sure. with levels right every single she level does. she gets she gets so so many amazing right. like uh, look at other carries they there comes a point after which their abilities just don't scale that well with levels jugs Healing ward, although yes, one and two levels is great difference, but really after the second level, it's just kind of starts to fade off. Uh, his his um, blade dance, it's 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 whatever, you know. It's uh, it's okay. It doesn't scale super well until you get good items. But Luna, you know, one hit between blades and two hits between blades is a huge thing. And then three hits also a huge thing, and four hits also a huge thing. You know, every <laughs> single level, and then her Q. Every single level Q does so much damage, uh, and it's such a low cooldown and all that. So it's, and also obviously if you're in the mid lane, you're leveling up really fast. Uh, imagine hitting somebody across the river with that huge nuke. Yes, uh, I know, especially uh, if you have a ward or something. But I, I totally know what you mean. Like you scale them, you pretty much build them the way I built it in the CM, the axe lane, right? I mean, pretty much, yeah, exactly, exactly. Unless you can get some pulled tangos, you might just get like a salve and the pulled tangos instead of tangos and a salve or something like, right? And you've got bottled really quickly, and then you've got even more free mana. So that's just super good on uh, Luna. Anyway, that's something that you might want to try and see uh, in okay. the lane because people well, might not be very used to playing Luna. And also, keep in mind, uh, not many people are going to pressure you. Not really, no. Just in the early levels, and that's also another way to get quick levels. So as long as people don't pressure you, you're definitely good to go. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, I'm also doing this other thing. Um, you know what? No, I'll get to that later. Um, all right, let's. I guess we can keep moving. That like that helps. That's all. A lot of really helpful info. Some of it was reminders. A lot of it was new stuff. Like it's really good. Uh, coming to the mid lane, I don't agree with most of the. Well, first of um, all, 
Before you go to mid, though, um, what do you think about the rest of my selections on the carry side? Yeah, yeah. Everything Besides, is do you do you, do you think in my bracket I should add? Um, here's the thing. You see there in the bottom right. Yeah. Well, Oracle is not really that. You know, I, I just accidentally had my mouse covered over it, so that's my pile of unused heroes. So I don't know why. Like it, it just magnified that one because I was selected it, but. When I look in Dota Buff Plus, I can look at like my last three months, ranked games only, the heroes I lost to the most. Yep. You know, like how many games I played against them. The the heroes that I lost the most against for how many games played and the percentage loss, like was Ricky, Razor, Necro, Veno, SF, and Tinker. Oh, these guys. Well, no, those are the. T there was a, a a lot of heroes within the heroes like pool that I've created. Yeah. That was in that bracket, but, but these, these are the only heroes I, I did not put in my own hero selections that are okay. I'm getting raped by. This guy, everybody's getting raped by mostly. Uh, this guy is actually pretty strong right now. If I think I'm pretty sure if I look at my uh, loss rate, I think Ricky will be definitely in the top five as well. The biggest problem is that people don't buy sentries. People buy dusts, but yeah. you have to understand that dust is a very reactive thing. People get, get um, a Bounty Hunter, people get Slardar, but again, you have to see Ricky to be able to throw down a uh, <coughs> crack or negative armor on him, but you have to first see him. So even if you are a Slardar, you need to carry a Dust, uh, uh, sorry, yes. a, a, a Sentry, not Dust, sorry, Sentry, right? You throw down a Sentry and you put the negative armor on this guy, he's going to purge it off because <laughs> he's going to have a, 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 a Diffuso. So you have to put so it every... on, on him again. So a good Ricky player always maxes his uh, smoke before putting the second point in anything else. I don't know uh, smoke. Do you mean or his, his fault? Um, I didn't mean to say smoke. There's, his there's Q. Kind of two ways to or, play. Uh, there's two ways to play Ricky. There's uh, smoke. max smoke build, which is a very very gank oriented build. Well, it relies on your teammates to get the kills more than yourself. Absolutely, and the other, and also it's That's hard. Kind of very dangerous because you're squishy. Uh, you have six seconds in your uh, cooldown in visibility. your visibility, so it's yeah. six seconds is eternity. You know, yeah, it so um, it only especially when you don't even have boots yet or something. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. Well, you would have boots if you had level four, but yeah, but it, it <laughs> takes like three seconds to kill you, uh, or even maybe less than that. So uh, six seconds is just <laughs> too much. So the other stronger way to play Ricky is definitely to put lots of points uh, early levels in his. Uh, in his uh, invis anyway that's getting besides the point that the main point is you need sentries for ricky not dust not slardar right. not bounty you, sentries. what do you think oh. i should put him in my i he honestly here's the thing i i kind of eyeballed the the difference like 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 under underlord might have had uh don't get to this pool right now just talk about me <laughs> all right for, yeah we're jumping around i'm sorry i was just gonna all right go ahead the razor uh no, no, that's what I was saying about Ricky. And yes, you can oh, yeah, I got that. put it him in, put him in your pool. I think. He, it, well, the point was he was a better win rate and pick rate than um. I think I think he was like was beating the axe even. <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with him in the offlane. I know people play him in the offlane. I know he is sort of strong in the offlane, but I just don't think he's a very offlane hero. I think his capabilities as a roaming hero uh, are so strong that you kind of just want to keep him but then again it's different play styles i don't play him in the offlane so i don't agree so yes i understand mm -hmm. that's pretty much my reasoning uh but there are people who play him in the offlane and yes okay sure they it's about getting practice right you get lots of practice on this hero it doesn't matter what bracket you're in uh, you practice he, ricky he is so strong you will even if you force the enemy to buy sentries, you're basically crippling their supports already. People who are weak. Now uh, think about it this way: in your bracket, supports don't want to buy rewards at all. So mm. most likely they're not going to buy sentries. If they buy sentries, then they're not going to buy observers. If they buy sentries and observers, then they are literally going to be dirt poor. If they are not dirt poor, then that means they're stealing farm from your carries, right? So mm. it's all of these factors which automatically by picking Ricky, you crippled, you started crippling the enemy team, uh, whether mm -hmm. it be by crushing them with Ricky or... Because they don't buy a sentries or because you made them buy a bunch of fucking so, detection? Either way, either way, even if they do buy a bunch of detection, like you, you get a sentry, uh, you know where their sentry is, you have tangos. I played this. Oh, uh, yeah, I played yeah. this every sing with every single sentry. I devoted two of their sentries. So, right. yeah, so it's really, really strong this way as well. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's Ricky. Razor, uh, the only thing with Razor, the 
reason why he's strong is people just don't know how to deal with it. Um, uh, if you look at my previous game where I played, what was I, Razor against... Well, um, how do you play him? I mean, you basically just dominate your lane. If you can't, then you're you're not a good Razor player or you just had a shit game. But no, 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 you dominate Razor, your lane and then you just start going down your lane, going down lanes with your with your teammates, right? If I man it. Well, that's the thing. You need to dominate your lane first, right? You right. need to dominate. I, I mean, lane. I'm saying if you dominate your lanes, you <laughs> yeah. get your teammates to come and you help you take yeah. the tower or whatever. Yeah. And then, well, I'll just tell you, like my my team random last night. It was the most annoying thing in the world. They randomed a um, uh, Meepo and then they randomed a Morphling, okay. and uh, they also picked a Wraith King. I think jungle. And then they, uh, and then I was like, well, screw this. I had the safe lane picked, and I shouldn't have done this. But I, the way I figured it was, both these people probably suck at their heroes. They probably suck at Dota anyway. And I better play Sven. Um, and then the guy picked a Razor and went off lane against me and completely wrecked me with his yeah. with his uh, teammate. They took my tower. They they destroyed the Morphling. They destroyed the freaking jungle. And then the game was over like instantly because Razor had like an S and Y and then like drums and treads or something. I don't know. Yeah, Razor is really really strong in the off lane. That is one thing that is absolutely true. The only uh, thing that uh, when I said Razor, I was talking about mid Razor, not off lane Razor. Uh, there's two different ways to play both those heroes. Um, the thing with mid Razor, or do you just want to talk about off lane Razor? No, keep on going with the... I'm not trying to talk about offlane. I guess we still need to talk about mid, but I guess we're talking about these heroes that have been wrecking me. Yeah, well, the mid razor. Obviously, you're not playing that much mid, so there's little point talking about mid, but the offlane razor. yes, you did rely too much on your supports, and even with supports, you have to understand that he's going to start leeching the, ex, uh, leeching the uh, da damage of your support, whoever comes to harass him. Oh, I know, yeah. And then he really, really uh, relies well, on... Yeah. Actually, I, I wasn't letting him kill me. Um, the Wraith King kept coming in lane and pinging him like he was gonna, we we're gonna kill him. And he'd run up to him and stun him. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like he starts sucking the damage off of me, and I instantly got out of his range. But Wraith King kept trying to hit him. Yeah. I mean, this tier is bad. <laughs> this is why I'm doing this. I'm gonna learn these heroes, and I'm gonna, you know, some of them you might say you need to take that out, or yeah. you know, but well, others you might add. But is that you have to understand that if he is destroying you in lane, then what is he doing? He's leeching your damage, he's pushing you out of the lane, uh, and well, then last hitting faster, he's, he's taking the tower, trying, yeah. No, no, then he's trying to last it, right? If you can manage to engage him long enough that he's actually not able to take last hits, right? Uh, he's ha he has very little, he, he has no way to catch up. He does not catch up. He is a really Yeah, no, he doesn't. If he doesn't farm in the early levels, he is not going to farm in the mid. He's not going to have any impact. And that is how you deal with Razor. You will sacrifice your farm, but you are trying to uh, kind of contest him, trying to make sure you will always go for boots. Because uh, if you, first first item almost, um, like if you know guaranteed Razor, Razor is in your offlane, just go for boots, dude. Don't even so you're saying maybe I could even like get one point of stun, none in my cleave, and then just like max my war cry and get boots, and then I, I, and then I, I basically like make him suck it out of me and like freaking chase me and stuff, right? I don't right? even think you get a point in stun. I think you get level one in uh, war cry because you need to run yeah. away from him, and you can just with boots and war cry, you can. And I would even get a extra like <laughs> uh, what's it called, uh, uh, wind run maybe, wind uh, wind lace. I don't know. I, so. I don't know. Like uh, wind lays um, a few points in Warcry right away, uh, uh, a, a stout shield, and then just basically let him start sucking the damage off you while you're running away and make him chase you, then go right back at him again, like keep him from doing damage. it. He's not going to get damage. And as soon as this is the other thing, as soon as his, as his link breaks, you turn full aggressive on him. You literally beat the shit out of him. Uh, either that or you go and farm that, that, that wave. But that is how you deal with Razor. That is literally. I always ran away from him when he did the when he did the um the the sapping. Yeah, once he's done sapping, right? Then you can't. Then you don't need to be afraid of him. Like, obviously, you mean if I, I break? You mean if I break it and don't allow him to take much? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I mean, right, I right. don't mean like if he's stolen a hundred damage, you just go ham on him. You, you right? No, no. I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, make sure that he doesn't. Steal well, I thought him. you were trying to say like you should just go at him right away, so no, that no, like no, I no, start no, threatening him before he can sap me. Like I'm, I'm like, is, no. If you have boots, if you have boots, if you have war cry, as soon as he throws down right. the link, you're gonna run away, and you're gonna he's gonna maximum steal like ten, twelve damage off you, right? 
right? I'm telling so you, that's what I did. You can actually destroy him after that because he he that, then he's no longer a threat. If you look at my last raid, uh, invoker game or maybe the one before that, I was up against a razor in the mid lane, and I literally the first two Hated minutes it. I had zero CS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had zero CS, and that and then I went on to have one of the earliest. Uh, what do you call it? Orchids I, in my uh -oh. in my career, because because uh, the the guy literally he spent all that time trying to chase me. I spent all that time, uh, you know, trying to mess with his last hits, trying to creep aggro, doing all of that stuff. He didn't get any farm, and uh, all Invoker really needs are levels. And with one rotation, we killed him. I got my gold. I got my boot. I got my items. Started killing him over and over again, because then he's got nothing. He doesn't have items. So that's you won that game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not like in the uh, last. I think game, is I, it? Think, no. I think I won the game. I'm not 100 percent sure. No, the last game was a uh, Exordium Walker. It was a uh, 1K friend, so it, that was that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, then we are talking about Necro. Uh, Necro is a very versatile hero. Offlane Necro. Well, I was gonna ask you, do you think I should add Razor to my my my? Uh... I don't think so. He's. I didn't. Uh, he's he's too like everything could go bad. Like if they gank yeah. my lane. Yeah, if they gank your lane, if they put a, a good support against you, if they have something like a Skywrath or anybody with a slow or a stun uh, who can yeah. pretty much stop you from leeching, you're pretty much destroyed. Yeah, I think like if I if I could pick him last pick like extremely situational and then wreck the game, but I need heroes that aren't super situational, at least to some extent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I'm not like practicing <laughs> all my valuable time learning um spamming and learning heroes that are only gonna be picked in like three percent of my games, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, just bad. Um yeah. okay. Yeah, with Necro, uh, I don't really know why you're getting destroyed with Necro, uh the guy maybe think, maybe well actually, do you know do you realize that some of these like for example like over the last few months or like eight months i played like 700 games or like five or six hundred games of of life stealers finn specter and um juggernaut yeah so maybe necro was good against a couple of those heroes and that's why i lost i don't know not really. I think their biggest reason why you're losing too much to Necro is because he punishes the first man in. <laughs> you're always the first man in. <laughs> oh, shit. You jump in, you take... Well, a for a while I was. But... Yeah, you, if you jump in, you take a little bit of damage, and he ultis you. Uh, Necro is pretty much the ulti, and that's it. You know, everything else, okay, his death pulse aura is... His death... Uh, his um, heart stopper aura is quite annoying to deal with in lane, but you can deal with it. Uh, his Q is uh, one of the best uh, level one uh, heal slash nukes, one of the best uh, abilities. But as you level up, as you go up in, uh, oh, you know, stuff, um, it, it really falls I, off. I think I know another reason for it is because they'll like max their passive, the necro, and go to the off lane, yeah. and um, my supports like don't know how to like don't try to kill him or deal with him. So I'm sitting there just like. Taking it up the butt from him and his laning buddy. Well, you can't because he's. And got, I can't do anything. Well, not anymore because he's got 700 range. So if you creep aggro, then he you actually go out of his range. Like I played Necro offlane a few days ago, and it was really impossible to stay in range of the carry. Uh, yeah. Because you're I mean, 700 range. You know the carry is gonna sure. have something like 600 range, especially if it's a Dao who's got 625 range. <laughs> so it's impossible to get in range of. Uh, well, you understand though that like um, I don't know if they do this in higher brackets, but Necro basically takes another hero with him. Um, yeah, sometimes yeah. a very clever hero, and sometimes exactly. it's just a random hero. Yeah. And they literally push as fast as they possibly can. So yeah. it's not that I can just pull aggro tricks. I literally am fighting under the tower, and sometimes my support will pull the easy camp, even though like a Dark Sea or Necro or like <laughs> like. <laughs> putting it up my freaking butt, you know, like yeah, so I. You pick Sven, or you pick Jug, or you pick a ranged hero. I go to the jungle. <laughs> yeah, or, huh? No, no, I'm no. Just no. kidding, but like they, they literally put so much aggression on the tower. They don't care about creep, creep, creep equilibrium. They don't care about pulling the lane back and denying me. They literally PMS? push and take down the tower like instantly. Do you get PMS? A pull man shield? Um, not I. I don't do it very often on Sven. I, I suppose there's games where I should. But... Yeah. 
when there's a necro, when uh, there's a hero who is pushing your lane constantly and you're fighting under tower, it doesn't matter if you have Orca or not, you need to pull man shield to be able to okay. uh, tank and farm creeps under the tower. Pretty much any carry, it doesn't matter if you're even a ranged carry. Uh, actually, with ranged carry, it's different, but um, there have been games where I, I mean, Luna is a great example where I've gone for man shield because I've been constantly pushed in, but that wasn't necro, I think it was uh, a coddle, coddle in the off lane. I believe. Okay. Anyway, uh, besides the point, that's completely besides. That. I think. Um. Yeah. <laughs> going forward, uh, I think the Venomancer once again a canter in the off lane. Uh, very very similar story. He's constantly pushing in. You need a pull man shield. Um, against this guy as well. Uh, constantly yeah. pushing in. You're constantly fighting on the tower. Um, slows you down. He's a great anti swim as well. But doesn't matter you have BKB or not. The slow goes to it. Um, from the you know sting. So it is Venom is a big menace. You know, SF SF is one of the shittiest win rates in my tier out of all the super six surprised. heroes. Super so, surprised you're losing to SF so much. Um, I don't know why. It's always when I play Sven, for some reason I I I think it was because like the first half of my two hundred and fifty Sven games were um I wasn't playing him as well, and so I wasn't finishing the game in 30 to 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. And when SF, so most of the time when SF went late game against me, for some reason I just couldn't hurt him. His agility or his his agility growth or his armor or something like I just couldn't hurt him. I could never bring him down. And then he, they almost always build an AGS build. So if I didn't have a BKB, uh, not only my right clicks couldn't get him, like he would just hit his alt and then like blow me up. Yeah, I like, think that's the main thing that his ult actually does. Um, on the return, it does damage too. But no, no, no. Uh, Ags, or you know, it heals. Reduces but, uh, your damage by 50%, right? So if you've got your ult on, um, if you've got your ult as Sven on, then it's almost like you don't have. It's not almost. It's exactly. Oh, like have the damage. Yes, I was reading that today. I I, for, I forgot about the SF and the fact that his alt slows and decreases the damage by half for six seconds. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just thinking, okay, it does the damage, and then on the way back, it, it or the damage out and the way back in, it like heals him. But I uh, forgot I'm about the even, slow and the damage. I'm what? not even a hundred percent sure if this damage reduction fifty percent is. A straight up damage reduction, or if it's just literally the uh, base damage reduction. Um, oh, like all damage dealt w from my hero, maybe? No, 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 just the physical damage. It does say physical, but I'm not sure if it's literally the, the total damage and, and the white damage being halved. Because if it gotcha. is, then your ult literally gives you only double damage on your on your um, on your white damage, not your green damage. All right. Right. So. Uh, if you have like a dragon, dragon edge, or any item that gives you damage, then your alt actually is not double damaging that item. Right? Okay. So that's the that's the issue. But if you spend actually does straight out fifty percent, then it's actually reducing your damage even more than what your alt would be giving you. <laughs> and if okay. you don't have alt on, I can completely understand why you're not dealing any damage to him because you've literally just got, you know, if you've got two hundred yeah. total damage, then you've actually got a hundred total damage. And then on top of that, he's got tons of armor because he's an agile hero. So especially late game, we yeah. always have like satanic. Yeah, and... he's probably gonna have some life steed as well. He's probably gonna have some Scotty of... satanic, like yeah. Daedalus. So like they just rips through like... me. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing really low damage. So it's BKB. And then he, yeah. So important against then. Um. Yeah. By the way, I keep interrupting you a lot, and I Don't think worry. I think we both realize there's a lot to go through in this yeah. in this thing. And um, I think you're like anxious to get through it, and I'm, I'm like anxious to like be thorough. Like I think we're, I think we're um, being so thorough. No, we're being really thorough. I'm glad, but like I, we don't need to move faster or anything. Like if for some reason we can't get through it all, we could just continue another. But like, I, I um, think I know what the reason is. Just hold on a second. I just need to get water. That's the, that's the main thing. Oh shit. So, okay. All right. Hey um. So before we go on any further, um, I, I need you. I need to ask you about something. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me uh finish before you say because I know that a lot of people might say this is stupid that I'm looking at this thing, but there's there's things to gain from it still. And okay. Dota Buff Plus, you can go and you can look under the items tab, and then I can literally like put uh I can uh categorize things by well for the in this example I put last six months and I put ranked matches only, 
And then I systematically went through um, Sven, Jug, Spectre, Lifestealer, Drow, Luna. You know, like my favorite carries that I've actually played enough. You're right. Like maybe, maybe like 75 plus games or something. Yep. So obviously there's things like, okay, well, uh, you won the game with a bottle. That's stupid. Or, or you know, like S and Y, like, okay, well, I don't know. Like a lot of times I would buy it at the end just because I, you know, I was in their base, taking their base, and I just bought it because it was a quick item to buy with the money I had. Yeah. I mean, but then there's things like um, Armlet, Echo. I mean, no, no. Like, for example, um, I'm on Sven right now. And um, I have like 240 games played on him. Um, most of them are in the last six months. And, for example, um, take a look at this. I have it organized by win rate. And then I'm only going to pay attention to the ones that have quite a high, quite a high uh, bot rate or whatever, like pick rate. Um but MKB, 26 games, 46% win rate. Mm-hmm. And then I also have 131 games BKB, 50%. <laughs> and I, I want to say that because I'm, I do all right with Sven and I'm getting better at him, like, Sven doesn't want to get a BKB in, in games where people are stupid, like in 2K. And they also don't want to get an MKB because... If you had a day list, like I even saw it on the Game League video, I think like you really don't like to get MKB unless there's like two heroes that have evasion. Yeah. Um, because really you can just jump in. And I mean, usually I'm pretty good at jumping in and not hitting the person with evasion and just cleaving them all dead. Yeah. Or, you know, if, if you have the ability to stop that hero from running, I mean, you're going to blow him up eventually, you know, even if you miss a few. But like, so it's like, <clears throat> I mean... For example, my Blink Dagger, uh, which is probably 95% of my games on Sven, is 206 games with 57% win rate. Um, So that's not like, that's not that's not really a biased item. And so then I go down and see the BKB, and it's like 50% win rate with lots of buys. And then MKB, 26 games, 46%. I like. Let me. Sorry. Go ahead. Let me stop you here. Uh, Don't go over the items. Or item win rates, or anything like that. It is completely useless. No, that's my game's items win rate. Not... I understand that. I understand okay. that. But even your item win rates, sim- simply saying that BKB has a fifty percent win rate, and I played on uh, Sven. That it doesn't matter, uh, right? If you uh, don't get BKB in those fifty percent of the games that you actually uh, won, then you th- those probably would be one hundred percent games. Those would have been I mean, that might have made that, that might have made my fifty-seven uh, percent, two hundred six blink dagger games down to like fifty percent. Uh, uh, for all I know, you know what I'm I, saying. I don't, I don't know what what I am saying is that the games that you actually won with the BKB, it's most likely that those games you won only because of BKB. The thing is, like, you don't know. It doesn't matter. The items literally don't actually. I see what matter. you're saying. And similarly, uh, looking at when you look at the hero win rates. Um, e- even looking at the hero win rates, the only time that it actually benefits a lot is when you are actually seeing that, okay, uh, Omni Knight is 61% win rate, right? And uh, we're looking at the overall 2K bracket. So, okay, yeah, the guy is probably like either really easy to play or really overpowered. And let's be honest, the guy isn't that overpowered. He's just like super easy to play and his counter is... Uh, there's, there's there's no hero counters to him, but there's an item counter to him which people don't usually make. So that's Jeez, pretty so. much. And you can literally well, awesome. run out each of these heroes and give a good example uh, for for these heroes. And then the loss rate, you know, the si- similar thing could be said about loss rates. Very few heroes are actually down there in the bottom tier uh, who are actually bad. You know, who are actually like not a good hero to pick. Um, I think uh, I can't really pinpoint any right now. Uh, Earth Spirit is maybe a bad hero now, almost. Uh, Tusk is kind of a bad hero. Um, Can I say that I do realize that there are heroes that, um, I mean, whether they're good or bad on the tier, whatever, but, like, if you have Omni Knight, let's say he has, let's say he has a 2%, like, a 2% pick rate, which is, like, Mm -hmm. 15th bottom percentile or whatever, if it was 2%. And then he has 61% win rate. Yeah. Obviously, that's shit compared to yeah. a 20, 20% pick rate and a 61% win rate. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So no, that's no. why, I mean, if I do go by pick rates and win rates, I make sure it's a hero that I enjoy, but I also will only pick it if it has a high, high-ass high pick rate and win rate. You know? I mean, 
I mean, pub stompers. It's less situation. These are pub stompers, but there's different reasons to why they're pub stompers. Like, Io is an extremely strong hero, right? Um, for when he's played the way he should be played. The reason why she's here at the bottom is because she's not being played the way she's played. The Io is yeah, only yeah. and only super strong when you pair her up with a CK, uh, with a Bristleback, with a Legion Commander, with a Tiny, um, with maybe a Life Stealer. That's the only time. If you pair an IO with a Beth Prophet or an IO with a Magnus or a, <laughs> with an Anti Mage or something like that, it's not going to be effective. It's going to lose the most. I, of the well, I mean, I did random an IO one time and I supported a Medusa. And uh, I the, the Medusa was pretty good. And I actually played <sighs> a probably better than average IO for my bracket. Hmm. But I and but the more important thing was I was good at supporting. And I, I uh, you know, I. Um, and there was a jug too, so I did support him a little bit too. But like, I think we won that game because of the way I played IO. I, I you know, think like if you would have picked any support at that stage, uh, you might have won the game because IO doesn't really pair well with Juggernaut or provide anything much to the. Right, they need a high damage, uh, yeah, high damage, I mean, slower no, hitting arrow. I mean, it's the fact that the IO actually forces the enemy team to play as five and they can't really go out on the map, they can't split push, they can't farm, you ward up everywhere and then as soon as you see somebody, you have a hero who can gank and kill people like a CK or a Tiny or something, you mm. uh, relocate, you kill yes. them and you force them to either five man movement or just stay in their base and that's what the strength of the IO is and any other hero who can't do that, like you, you pick him with a with um, anti mage, okay, sure, anti mage is good at killing, but is he? He has no stun. Uh, if the enemy can run away, you know, it's it's all these things like. Well, isn't it also about? I mean, like you really, you your overcharge really is fucking fast, though, right? I mean, like uh, all of a sudden, yeah. Medusa is split shotting everybody with a Yasha. Yeah, like, but Medusa is super super slow, and even if she is super uh, split shotting people, uh, how long does it run take away. anybody else to kill you? You know, Maybe we had some AOE control in the game. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Like it takes like two or three seconds for anybody to just hit you twice yeah. and kill you. So uh, you don't have Medusa doesn't really protect you at all or does anything. But the, on the other hand, the tiny can okay. just stun the person and that's it. They, they don't I got gotcha. you. you well, it's it's pairing. It's like all of these stats have a reason why they're there, right? You can't. And really I understand that. Like, and I also understand that. Like, Queen of Pain might only add a forty-four percent win rate. And the, uh, I don't know if it's a good example, but you might have a high skill hero that has like 50% win rate and a 5k plus, but then at 2k, she has a four, like they, that same hero has like a 42% win rate because maybe it's still an amazing hero in that bracket in the hands of people that can actually, they've played them like correctly and they've probably played 100 games or 50 games. You know, they know how to play that hero really well. Mm -hmm. And so, but then there's more people who just completely freaking trash it and suck it. Yeah. Because it's a high skill hero, so all of a sudden it looks like a hero that's not good in that bracket. I mean, I, I get that part too. Yeah, I mean, look, look, at, look at Meepo. He's got forty seven percent win rate in two K bracket and a fifty three percent win rate in the five K plus bracket. So that's a prime example of a high skill cap hero. But I've seen people who know what they're doing in a Meepo game yeah. and a, in my bracket, and it's it's insanely scary. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, they those, just those wreck people, it in twenty minutes. I can believe believe me, those people are Smurfs. They are not three K two K people. They are not. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter how many games you play. You need a uh, super map awareness to be playing Meepo. You need uh, really good farming patterns. You need really, really good micro skills. And if you have all of that, then you're not going to be 2K in no way. So, so maybe bo a booster or something yeah, like that. Most, like, like booster is one of the best ways to boost. And one of the fastest ways to boost is to play heroes like Meepo. Uh, or Morphling. Or... Yeah, Morphling. Slark. Um, yeah, these, these heroes are one of the best to play. Uh, when you're boosting. So, regardless, I don't want to... Okay, sorry. Items. We're going off on a tangent again. Yeah, you don't want to be looking at items and saying, like, oh, I've had, a, I've got a, such a low win rate on with a battle fury, so I shouldn't make battle fury. That's not true at all. Uh, it does. It, this only looks at the uh, items you finish the game with, and as you said, lots of right. items. Like Divine Rape here, why don't you try <laughs> well, Yeah, but I, I also get like something like an Assault Curris could even be biased because like, okay, you're obviously doing very well if you got yeah. that on this hero. All of these big and you're items, probably going to win. You will see that all of these big items have high win rates. And this is the same thing that you will see in your games, that all of the big items will have relatively high win rates. 
and if you for example see something like a satanic having a really low win rate then you may be making satanic really early maybe you're not turning it on i remember watching one of your games where you were almost close to dying and i was screaming at you click satanic click satanic and you didn't you mm -hmm. forgot you had satanic so it's things like just because i never buy it like i never i i was never getting it for a while there on Sven, but <laughs> and i remember that i think i remember the game because afterwards i was like oh god team i'm sorry i didn't hit satanic yeah uh, so it's all of these factors which come into also uh, like what maybe i just suck at using a bkb you know like maybe it's saving me and half my game maybe it like all right so out of those 80 games with a 50 percent win rate on bkb maybe 20 30 of them i didn't even need it like I could have gotten, a, I should have gotten a different item, or in another thirty of them, maybe my misusage of it just got me killed and wasted it, maybe. and made my whole instead of killing their whole team, like I hit it at the wrong time and like I got stunned, locked before I could even use it, yeah. and like whatever, you know, also, or maybe also, I bought it in a game where there was a BKB Pearson spell and I thought that I was better having a BKB than a Lincoln's or just ignoring both of them. Way. Way. Think about it this way: you usually, uh, you usually go for a BKB. Um, uh, a lot earlier on if you think you're losing the game like you've got only one or two items and you're like oh my god my team oh that's true so and usually when like you're Sorry, already losing yeah 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 exactly exactly you're already losing and you're like oh right. god I can't actually do anything in the team until right. I can be so you rush a and that's but the and on the other uh, on the other hand there's a lot of games where I know that I'm doing um it's like <laughs> I'm like on the cusp of like, do I need this BKB or do I not? And sometimes I know I need it, but I also know that if I can outplay them with a higher damage item instead, that yeah. the game will be over. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I'll go that route a lot of times when fan. And, and the funny thing is, when I make that connection, I usually am safer. And so when I grab a BKB, sometimes I just think I'm, you know, like freaking, you know, I don't play as careful. Like, you know, you still should make a really perfect is possible initiation even though you have the bkb just so that you can like kill everyone at once you know and like i i might just do my reckless yolo even like it might be exaggerated because i have a bkb yeah and look at the, all these single light single items like the, the reason why these these guys have such a low win rate is because you would the reason why you didn't get to complete these items are because you were losing most likely right you didn't actually get to complete them. So look at Yasha, how what a horrible win rate it's got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw how many. Oh, you actually pulled it up. That's funny. I, I saw it was like a lot of games that I only had a Yasha when I finished the game. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, like, yeah. So I had it, some bad games. Uh, items, items don't matter at all, to be honest. I got gotcha. you. Anyway, moving forward. So, yeah, all right. Well, that was a good conversation. Um, uh, Can I ask you, okay, like, well, honestly, I don't know if you agree with me, but I honestly think that um, Marana, Underlord, and Tinker should be nerfed to a slight degree in the next patch, and I think they will be. It's funny you should mention that, but I wanted to get to Tinker first, because he is okay, like, in the line. So, as you mentioned, Tinker, I think Tinker does need a little bit of a nerf. He is kind of, he is very, very strong. Um, he should be able to to single handedly kite and carry um the strongest of carries like over, like as long as he wants if he's solo with him. Yeah, I mean like just Shouldn't. having his small nerf would be okay. Like just just put the laser as magic damage. Uh, I think that should be enough. I think. Uh, or how long? How often? I mean, uh, like there's there, I mean he can reset his all of his spells and items within like what a half of a second. No, it takes a while. Um, one second. One second. It's not more than level, level sixteen. It can't be more than one second. Okay. Yeah, it's level three, but you're gonna get level three pretty darn late because uh, if you get level level two earlier on or level three earlier on, then you're not gonna have enough mana to sustain a double or triple re rearm. So. Um, uh, oh right, it's all about mana too. I mean, like if it, obviously most heroes in the game can, most cores in the game can control a game if they're uh, if they're fed all, fed as hell, like all hell. Yeah. yeah, the right. biggest thing, the biggest issue with Tinker is that he really needs to be shut down in the early levels. If you yeah. are able to, and th that's pretty, go watch my previous Tinker games. Like, I get so shit on, seriously shit on, uh, when I play Tinker. It's so annoying because you need supports who will constantly rotate in to help you because people will, I usually die four times by the time I get travels because that's how much I get ganked. 
I get ganked maybe. That's eight. how much people at your level know that they need to gank you, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. And if you don't gank Tinkers, uh, they will win the game. That is. Would strange. you say that they gank you when you play Tinker at your bracket even more than they do like an Alchemist or an Evoker? Oh, uh, tough. Or one. they're all about I, this. They're all like needing to be shut down quick, huh? I think. Uh, I actually, to be very honest with you, uh, playing when I'm playing Alchemist, I don't actually get that much focus because uh, you do get your items pretty darn quick. Uh, you are staying a lot on the outside of the map. Uh, the acid spray really hurts a lot. Um, also, you get your armlet like really quickly before the enemy team and really pressure you. Whereas a Tinker, he really doesn't have any defensive things. So okay. uh, also Alchemist gets level six pretty quickly, and after level six you just can't kill him. So it's really that first four minutes of the game that you have to pressure him, and even then, like how many people can actually pressure him in the first four minutes? So uh, yes, I do get pressured with Alchemist, but that's only in the first four minutes, and the first four minutes usually you die once, the maximum. So it's not too bad. Uh, with Invoker, when it's a Exhort Invoker, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's maybe as much, if not more, than a Tinker. Um, but with a Quasvex in Booker, <clears> once again, you actually can't be killed that easily, and you can actually turn the tides around. So, think uh, that makes sense. One of the worst. Um, that's a good explanation. But yeah, that's that's pretty much Tinker. So Trink Tinker is really strong right now. Now, going on to the Mirana. Uh, going on to your first can one. I, the... yeah, can yeah. I, um, just real fast on the, on the mid-heroes that you're about to talk about. Um, yeah. Like, uh, you, I mean, I, just keep in mind, and I know you've played in 2K now, yeah. so yeah. you know what it's like. Yeah. Um, I could pick mid-heroes that uh, are really good in higher brackets like all day long, but they may or may not do as well in this one. But like, yeah. I know from playing in my games how many times a mid Marana, a mid PA, a mid OD has just wrecked everybody. Actually, the sniper, the sniper does it a lot. Yeah. And so does Alchemist. But like I also pick these heroes off the biggest high and, and uh high pick rate and win rate too. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Like keep that in mind. Like yeah. Okay, so first off, just no. Okay. Just take him off. Just no, please don't. Uh, okay, fine. Same goes for this, just no. Don't pick him. Um if Whoa. if snipers snipers are good at uh destroying the Did you know that he has a really high win rate with an kind of like a situational pick rate like all the way up into like 4k right now even in Mid. 5k he's marginally strong but the thing is that you uh, as long as the enemy team doesn't have somebody who can get on top of him he is strong but nowadays i would be surprised if that happens because you've got miranas you've got pas you've got ricky maru every single bloody game there's a ricky fucking maru uh, i don't know why but it's happening more and more not less I, I don't get it. Like, even the Dota buff stats are going up every day because that meta thing looks at the last month instead of the last, you know, week. Yeah. It, for some yeah. reason, it doesn't... I don't know why it doesn't let you look at the last week, but... I I, I don't honestly don't know why Sniper is going up. I don't think he is really going so, up. Okay. Uh, don't, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at my real copy right now, and I'm taking Pudge and Sniper out right now. Yeah, yeah, just take them off. Okay, I'll do it. I'm going to take your I'm gonna take your advice. PA is definitely strong in the mid lane, but she is stronger in the uh, carry lane. So I think she should actually move her over to this lane. She's definitely a really, really strong hero right now. Uh, Mirana does need a nerf. Uh, I think actually PA needs a little bit of a nerf as well. Uh, my brother's my brother's spamming and getting like a 70% win rate at 4K with like 50 games. Uh, with PA? No, Mirana. Yeah, yeah, Mirana is... Uh, and that... MPA, but Mirana even more. It's just yeah. disgusting. Mirana is OP right now. I think the biggest problem with Mirana is not her Starfall or her Ags upgrade. I think the biggest problem with Mirana is once again the fact that she can uh, ulti and get her whole team invis and nobody will buy sentries and uh, people will usually carry dust. Even in my brackets, people usually carry dust. I am being so annoyed every single game. I can honestly show you, like, let me show you actually. Uh, let me show you, right? Um, well, you know, I do understand that uh, the re all the reasons why she's. I mean, she can blink in and then jump out without buying a forest staff. Look at she that, can. Mirana. Her star storm is a big deal, though, dude. Like, she starts completely wrecking everyone in two, two and three K when she gets her rags. 
Like I mean, she is she is strong in the in the. That, well, that, do you do you know another reason why Omni and Necro are so strong in two to three K, four K even? Because especially in my bracket, and my buddy was reading something about this, how, how like people run around and they see a hero that starts to get low health. They just go. They can't imagine anything other than that hero going down more and more. So they don't. They don't get the concepts of that tide turn when like Omni heals them or hits the ags, or I mean hits his ult or whatever. But or like or or the fact that they're even gonna get hit by pure damage. Like yeah. I found I played them like nine times over the last two days, and I found that it's just the funniest thing to watch people blow up from a nuke in the first like ten minutes. Yeah. Like. It's over and over and over and over again. And I wasn't even playing on me that well. I got too close to the middle of the fight, like, four times in a row and missed my ags, like, before I died. Missed, I mean, my, my ult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ult. yeah and, ult and we is- still won because I, had like, had used my greaves. I, I hit my, uh, my, my healing spell on two people. But then by the time I went to go hit my ult, like, I had gotten locked down and, and, and killed. I can't remember how. But, like, he's a strong fucking hero in this bracket. <laughs> Yeah, he does um, need uh, he does need his axe. But the thing with Mirana is, uh, as I said, yes, yes, axe is is good, is is strong. It makes the hero really viable. But uh, it's just a farming item. Yes, you can build Mirana into that E blade thing and all that. But to be honest, if you get that much farm and that much space on any hero, you can do that. I still think that one of the strongest things about Mirana is the is, okay. One of the strongest things about Mirana is the fact that yes, she can get her farm up really quickly, whether it be by uh, arrowing the creeps or whether it be by starfall damage and all that but I still think that one of the very strongest things is her ult and the fact that in the lower skilled brackets in most brackets um, she just will people just do not uh, prepare for the sentries and uh, no they don't like, you're like, absolutely right I I still f- um, I yeah. think if you took her ult completely away uh, yeah. uh, she would yeah. still be somewhat spammable mid right now, though. It's 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 really uh, disgusting, dude. I think it, honestly, I mean, you will see the drop in the win rate, especially in the lower levels, lower brackets, two Ks, mm-hmm. three Ks, and even four Ks. Her win rate will be somewhere in the lower forty percent, honestly. Without uh, her ult. The reason why no, uh, because of her ult. Because the reason why she's strong in the later. Uh, 5k plus is because people really know how to use her combos well. People split push really fast, people push lanes really fast, people use her uh, combos to blow people up really well. But you have to understand, blowing people up doesn't win you games um, at all. Uh, ulting five people and ganking your whole team out of surprise uh, wins you games. Ulting yeah. to escape. This game, honestly, this game, I this was a one game. This was 100% of one game. And one of the most turning points in the game was I popped my level three ult onto a onto this guy in the middle of a fight Which one? with uh, oh. PA. Right, PA was their strongest. And while I was jumping in, Verana popped her ult. I did two hits. And we hadn't detection, and I literally ended up just whiffing my ult, and the entire team turned on me and killed me, and we lost that team fight, and we lost the game after that. And that was all because this bloody bitch <laughs> turned her ult on when we had absolutely no detection, no sentries, uh, or even dust or anything like that. So it's all of these things um, that do make Yeah, mistakes. I'm totally listening to you. I believe you. But I'm, I just can't tell you how many times in this uh, since 6.86 that I think it was 6.86 when I did the Star Storm, and then they took away the uh, the double-double. But... Yeah, but even but then, then, like, yeah. but like, even after that, I'm not even remembering what happened before they took that away. But like, I can't tell you how much that whether it's a gank or whether it's an entire team fight that with that ags, um, whether she gets it from snowballing early on or she does shitty and finally gets it at 28 minutes, um, she jumps into a fight, and because people are so bad at positioning and just so bad at Dota at this level. Yeah. That they just she just jumps in and blows everyone up. It's it's a big deal. Like she'll jump in and nuke nuke three people that are half health dead instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, it's her invis, but like I think the higher level I think there's a trade off at, at two to three K, I think it's a little more than well, it's both. Well like think equally. about it this way. Think about it this but, way. If the supports aren't buying twenty sentries every game they might actually get a glimmer cape, and then she can't actually do that much damage to them. No, it's true, but I think if you took away her Ag's ability 
and you took away her ult, she'd be like a 40% win rate. No, no, and she'd I... be 10% win rate if you take that. <laughs> then she's completely garbage. She's a creep, pretty much. Um, no, you gotta no. remember that people don't dodge arrows, and that early game matters, and that some people yeah. in my bracket are actually very good at, um, like, just solo killing people. Yeah. You know, so like the arrow lasts forever. Solo, solo and... killing doesn't get win you games. That's the right. concept of the uh, of the two k, three k, one k bracket that people misunderstand. Like how many times you can kill people, it doesn't matter until you actually are able to push towers. And this guy can actually push towers because she nukes uh, an entire creep wave in one second. So you can actually push yeah. towers quite easily. So that's that's another strong strong point, right? Yep. So that, I think there's all kinds of ways to look at this stupid hero that needs to be This guy is strong. I don't think you need to practice him because you do need to practice him to play her well. But I'm I actually, think... when I play her, I have a knack for it. I'm okay. actually pretty decent for it. And I played her twice in an unranked game about a week ago and I just annihilated it. It was so easy. Oh, okay. If you have practiced, then that's good. Because uh, the reason why I was saying that you don't need to practice because I'm pretty sure in a few days or weeks or something like that, I'm pretty sure very early, quickly. Uh, pretty soon she's going to get nerfed, so there's no point doing that. Um, that's pretty much why I haven't played Lu uh, Mirana, but it's taking ages for Ice Frog to nerf her. I, I, I think that with only, like, I think that I can actually win more than half my games going mid if I just spam Mirana. That's why I, th I figured if I pick her situation, like, our, like in, like, half my games, like... She's I, not a situational game, that's thing. Not situational, but, like... If I pick her in the best games, like I'm gonna win most of those games, yeah. um, I mean, just because these guys, I did, I know I deserve in going up in MMR, and if I actually play her a few times and get a slightly better mid, then I'll be winning most of my games with her. So like, why not pick her? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. I, I'd like to abuse her while I can. It's not a big deal, but like. Anyway, what else? Um, I think Mirana is a hero that I'm not gonna take away. I took the Mirana, the <laughs> sniper, and fudge away. No, Mirana, Mirana is fine. Uh, I think you need to reduce. I think maybe remove OD as well. The, the reason what? for that is because you need to have the biggest carry pool, like ten heroes in the carry pool, and then you need to have a very small, uh, very small everything else pool. Because the thing is that you you wanna spam carries, and you're gonna play uh, like majority of your game as carry, right? Uh, so I don't know, eighty percent of your games as carry. So that's a very small ratio. A very very small number of games that you're gonna be playing anything else. Now, if you have got a huge hero pool for playing everything else, that means in a given month you're playing X once or twice. You're playing Ogre once or twice. If you've got this bigger pool, so you don't you don't really you don't get to practice too much on these heroes. So I don't think that's a really good idea. I think you should have like maximum of three mid heroes, three offlane heroes, um, three or four support heroes, and uh, maybe one or two jungle heroes. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. I, um. You know, I, that's one reason why I wanted to have this conversation with you is to narrow it down and, and have you tell me the things that you're telling me. But, like, I do need to say, though, um, just a couple things before we go forward with this part of the conversation. Like, I actually enjoy playing something other than carry sometimes because, like, after a while, uh, you know, spamming the same thing over and over gets a little bit boring. And uh, for some weird, weird reason, you're just like, oh, this is... Uh, I don't know. You like you know you want to do something else to win, but yeah. like, here's the thing. Like, I honestly think that um, spamming mid probably does win um, this bracket more, just because of the way that people um, dual lane and just like spam like um, spam kill you in your in your lane. I mean spam uh, harass you. Yeah, like well, I, I watch your games and you get to go and do a game with this Finn and uh, have a support do all of the right things and and zone out the solo offlaner and maybe even kill him. It's like easy fucking life. Like I know enough in this game that if you put me in 4K, I'll probably win half my. I mean, three and a half to 4K, I'll probably win half my games, even if I don't get any better, because the games are played that way in a lot in so many games, and I know what to do with like pulling the creep aggro and stacking the camp and blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, like, so I'm getting off on a tangent, but the point is, is that like in, so in, a, in, a, in a, in a, in a third of my games, someone, or no, I would say about like maybe a fifth of my game, someone like uh spam picks carry and doesn't move no matter what, there's nothing I can do. And I'll wreck the game by picking another carry. Yeah. And then there's, um, a lot of other games where uh, maybe 
maybe they didn't spam pick me and move me out of my lane, but everybody picked a carry in another lane. And I know I'm going to lose because, you know, the enemy has a, uh, a fucking spirit breaker and a Nyx and, and, um, an SF man or whatever. And we have like, like three, like shit ass, like carries that can't do anything in the early game. And even if I do well in my lane, I just know that we're going to lose. So, uh, that's why I am fifth picking now or fourth or fifth picking. And I'll select carry, but like, if they start picking too many carries, I'll go, you know, oh, fuck it. And I'll pick a support or an offlaner and then say, just, you know, go to, you know, hey, Sven, go to carry or go to safe lane. But I mean, so like the the point is, is like, I think the best way to raise MMR is actually like, if you like to offlane, then pick your five or six offlane heroes that you can spam. And then, and then, and then also pick like five support that you can spam. Yeah. If yeah. you love to mid, then pick five mids and pick five supports. If you like to carry, pick five carries and five supports. Like, yep. because you can almost always uh, get your choice of support if if uh, if if your favorite position is taken. Yeah, absolutely. I do so agree. like, I mean, I maybe I do what you're saying and just stop trying to mid and and, and off lane. Maybe only pick like two heroes for each one and then just um, stick to like carry and support. Yeah, I mean, like in this hero pool right now, uh, move PA to the carry. Uh, you've got you've got Amirana, you've got uh, what's his name, Zeus, and you've got Alchemist, and that's it. That's your mid hero pool. You don't need to play OD. OD is quite situational. Okay. Uh, you don't really need to play OD. So that's that's your three mid heroes. And in the off lane, moving on to the off lane, I don't think you need to. I play just won that. like my last four games playing him, though. It's yeah, it's, but, uh, it's, it's such it's, noob stuff. It's um. I think he'll get nerfed a little too because he has like a 55% win rate in all four brackets with a high pick rate. When did that happen? Actually, Go ahead and look. It's disgusting. He is the most needed nerfed hero right now because he can like he can build like almost anything and he can support, he can offlane. There's even situational in mid games. Like um well go to go to offlane or pick pick off pick offlane first. Go up, to, go up. Can you like make it off lane on the lanes? Nope. nope. I don't have uh, don't right know. there. Oh, well, on my screen, if you go to off lane in every bracket, he has uh high red bars across. He, it looks like the Marana basically, but it's all 55 54 percent win rate across the entire brackets. I'm actually a bit surprised because it's actually worse than that if you go to off lane only because Cause the pick rate, the pick rate will be like double on all those with the same win rate. I'm surprised but, because people do know how to deal with him now. Uh, I feel his it's biggest worse. his biggest problem now is the fact that he can actually save his team by ulting and running away. Yeah, uh, that is one of that is his biggest issue. But then all you really need to do is save a four staff, and you can literally <laughs> make him abandon his team. Uh, so oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Or, or or make sure one of one of the main people that you want to kill, you force stuff them out of his ult, and that that person is stuck there all by himself. So it's things yeah. like that that you that, there are counters to him. And in the off lane, um, I think he is getting easier and easier to deal. With. It's getting easier and easier to deal with him. To be very honest, I'm I was thinking, and I was pretty sure he'd actually get buffed a little bit because he's uh, he's pretty shitty right now. But his win rate says otherwise, and I'm a bit surprised. I'm not sure why. Um, I think in most of my games that I've seen, he's lost almost all of the games, and the games that he's won, it's not because of him that they really? won. So yeah, it's it's just maybe it's because you communicated to your team, hey, we need to do this or that. Yeah, yeah. it's like you you pretty much everybody in the in the off lane, you kind of know as a support, you know that you can't do anything to him, you can't zone him out unless you've got a really really good support, somebody who nukes a lot, like a Skyrath or something. Unless you've got something like that, you really can't deal with him. So what you do is. You literally you sort of abandon the mid lane, uh, off lane. You stack pull, and then you completely go and wreck the mid lane. And then what you've got the situation you've got is your carry is going to get a little bit of farm shore, going to get all the levels though, and your the enemy mid lane actually is going to get completely shit on because the support is pretty much just doing a dual lane in the mid lane. And that's what I've done in the past, like oh. every single game that I have an underlord uh, and I'm playing support. Yeah. So, well, you know, I, I, I suck at Underlord, and I won, like, four games in a row on him because... That's the other thing. I'm not. you got to remember, though, that, like, this hero is broken in 2K because, like, I, whether, like he has a 55% win rate. But in the hands of someone that deserves to go up in MMR, which I would argue is me, 
even if it's 500 points, um, I can use a hero like that, a BKB Beerson, even if it wasn't BKB Beerson, yeah. but like, I know that I can waste someone's BKB with it. Yeah. Or I know that I can, um, or partially waste it. I know that I can, uh, if I have a Sven on my team that insisted on carrying, then I go Underlord, and, and I, I or wrecked the enemy team with Underlord, even my Sven sucks. Yeah. Like, there's just so many things I can do with him. Like, I, uh, one creep wave dies when we're pushing, and we kill two heroes, and all of a sudden, with only a Vlad's and a Blade Mill, I'm doing 280 damage yeah. per hit for, yeah, like, one minute. I, I take down the tower as fast as Finn does. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, like in my the positional, and then, like, a lot of times, uh, your, your, your team will not group up. And all of a sudden, no. um, I hit my ult and bring him to another lane, and we take a tower. Like... Yeah. I was having so much fun on him. Like he might be a retarded hero, but it, it, he has mechanisms that make it so that a person that deserves to go up an MMR can just wreck the lane and then wreck the game. Uh, maybe, like, maybe, maybe. I, the thing is, like, okay, I've good. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be an expert on Underlord because I've actually got zero losses on him. Okay. But then I have zero wins on him as well. Oh, oh. <laughs> Because <laughs> you haven't played him. <laughs> no, so I actually am not a great person to really uh, comment on Underlord because I really don't know, uh, well, apart from playing against him, which I've done a lot, I really don't know um, the you know strengths and weaknesses. I know the weaknesses of the guy for sure, and I know some strengths of him is that I can counter, but I don't know the hero very well because I haven't played him much. Um, so I don't know if... I can say that he should or should well, not be in the off lane, but as as we discussed, like you need to put less heroes in the off lane. So uh, I, I definitely you. think Axe. The thing with Axe is that if you've got a dual lane against you, which you mostly will in your bracket, Axe will shit on that game, dude. That I found that. Yep. Strongest thing, but obviously. And I tend to uh, make some really stupid mistakes with Axe in the beginning when he's still yeah. too squishy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, I don't even play him that well, but I've I have a fifty percent win rate with like six games. But well, he's fun, <laughs> and and with just a little bit more self control, like I would wreck with him. Yeah, no, it took me four games, about four games, to really uh, un understand that it does. Uh, and this is a long time ago. Four <laughs> games. Uh, that he is super squishy in the early levels, and I think uh, after I played four games, it wasn't even I didn't even discover it all by myself. I think I watched AUI 2000, uh, his axe, uh, just a pub game in the off lane from level one, and I realized that dude, this guy is not doing anything level one. He's still he's level two. He's still not doing anything. He's playing so defensively. Oh, he's level three. He killed two people. <laughs> so it's it's. Mm -hmm. Level one and level two on Axe is really weak. He is really yeah, strong. it is, and, and I I was being a little reckless with that at some point. <laughs> yeah, so you really have to play safe. So Axe definitely, definitely a great hero. Uh, Void, if you want to climb an MMR, if you are a good person, uh, sorry, not person, if you are a good, player, I think so. Else well, Void's right now my um my brother's friend is an off lane player. My you know Bloodhawk, the 4K player. 3.9 or whatever. He's he's actually probably 4K right now as he's playing. He he got back up again, but his friend is uh uh was like 3.8, 3.9 with him like six months ago, and he dropped down like 3.5 playing with a bunch of people. But he's a very focused, very solid, very intelligent player. Yeah. And um, he likes off lane. So he actually started spamming Void and Slarder, and in one week he went from 3.5 to like 3.89. I would. Um, he was winning like all his games with Void and Slarder, but. Yeah. Uh, well, I would say no Slardar. Uh, He's a little higher MMR than me, though. So. I, I don't know about the MMR, but... I it was mostly that Void that got him the MMR, though. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I would say as well. And the other thing is that Slardar solo offlane is really, really weak. He can't do yeah. much in the offlane. He's not going to contest. He can't really fight the... <laughs> would you say that, like, a lot of times I'm up against an enemy dual offlane, but <laughs> yeah. in the same way, in my bracket... Most of the time, when I go off lane with a hero, uh, my enemy, my uh, my team will pick another solo off lane and go with me, or they'll pick a support and go with me, like they're supporting me. Yeah. So a lot of times, slaughter is good because I am a dual off lane, and I, we just get kills slaughter. and wreck their lane and confuse them, and 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 you know what? Grab a quell and blade, and I I take almost all the denies and last hits against these dummies. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Slaughter is strong when he has another person with him. Slaughter is almost like a semi-carry. Like, he needs a support with him, and he can scale well. Uh, but without a blink dagger, uh, Slaughter is useless. Uh, he doesn't um, need levels that much, oh, yeah. but he does need a blink dagger. So <laughs> he's a really awkward hero at the moment because, okay, yes, you can Iron gotcha. Sun and jungle him, but then you're sort of leaving the carry lane completely free farm. But you, and you know like even though you played in 2k for like what like 20 games or something yeah. 25 games yeah. i still find that, that no matter how much and you want to deny this or admit it i can still see your brain making assumptions and and recommendations and denies on things in 2k that you still don't completely fully grasp or feel like i do like I think so. Like the starter thing, you just keep going back to, well, you can iron talent them. People don't win in my bracket by iron no, talent. Uh, you, they you, don't. You, and they go to dual off lanes with Slarter. They don't solo didn't, him. You didn't, <laughs> let me finish. you didn't let me finish. You didn't let me finish. Okay. I, I did okay. say, I, I was, what I was saying was that you can go iron talent on him, but then if in your 2K bracket you leave the carry uncontested, then you're going to lose the game. doesn't matter how good you are at iron talenting. Yes. Because the carries in your bracket will be, we don't know how to work. Right. Uh, if somebody's being, in, if somebody's contesting them, right. but if nobody's contesting them, they will play really, really well, better than what their MMR is. And then what you have is you've got somebody, somebody who's our talent jungling, which isn't very effective. And then you've right. got another person who's just boosted his MMR. Well, you're right. Well, you're right. And then well, you have my carry player like playing like shit. So that's, I go back to the jungle and Iron Talon, and, and their carry player gets free farm, and then we're just fucked. The reason why Iron Talon is really strong in the in the higher brackets is because you either get super harassed and don't get anything, or in which case the carry is still getting free farm, uh, or you go to the jungle and at least you can Iron Talon jungle get something out. So that's right. why it's strong. But if you go do that in the 2K, you're not going to get super zoned out so you can get levels and some farm and some yeah, harass off. But yeah. with, with, with Slardar, that's just not possible. You, you're going you're gonna to die. When you Would you also play. say that like most of the time that when a... Um, there's a whole other concept in a higher level of Dota that like if since a lot of offlane heroes are not able to get anything out of lane because of how well this safe lane does and their rotations or their supports or whatever. So this 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 uh, offlane hero goes in to get you know talent in the jungle and it's almost uh like most of the great offlane heroes like Tide or Void or Beastmaster or whatever like get these ultimates that are like when they hit level 6 they're so much more effective than someone like Slarter cuz you know, yeah, okay, Slaughter maybe got a couple more points in his stomp, but, like, his ultimate, like, yeah, it's, it's really powerful, but it's I not think, powerful. like, it's like not when a, an offlane hero powerful. goes, no, it's not, it's but not when an offlane hero goes into the jungle and he gets his level 6 in a higher bracket, especially if it's a good ultimate, they're going to damn make sure that the second they get that 6, they're going to use it. Absolutely. And yeah. get their get their mid or their carry a... Uh, <laughs> Advantage, yeah. Advantage, Absolutely. or uh, if they're really lucky, or they're really out of position, like that 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 offlane hero on a support will go kill a, one of their cores. Yeah, but you know, like Stardar can't do that. Um, but no, he can't. So, I, but that's just the thing, though. A stomp and two K with with just with just a sprint can change everything around. Like you don't even need your alt up. <laughs> People do see you coming, right? Two Ks. I don't know what two K you're but... playing. <laughs> I did play that too. They, so they still see you coming. Yes, they do. But I'm just saying that, like, I think it really comes down to the slaughter. It's 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 really going to be hit or miss whether you're going to lose the game or not if you're solo as a slaughter. And I don't want to play here like that. But yeah. like, in a dual off lane, uh, it's actually uh, uh, pretty damn good if you have any bit of a kill dual lane a kill potential. Any hero in the dual, in the lane with you, you you pretty good. right, pretty much. But like, so out of the heroes I selected, which ones can actually solo well besides Void? Yeah, solo, I mean, Axe, not Axe, dual. Axe really strong solo as well, uh, but Axe can't do it do it against a tri lane, which you will have very very. I won't fun. have those. They'll rotate maybe, but if I have good map awareness, I'll be okay because I can hit the jungle and. Yeah, I mean, like Axe, you will still have occasional off tri lanes, but that's like rare. So Axe is really good. Uh, Void is obviously really good even against the tri lane. Um, I really, really liked uh, uh, the, your um, <laughs> oh. Spirit Breaker. 
because he can also go up against the tri lane. He doesn't give a shit. Uh, even can? To me, huh? He can. How does how does he survive against a tri lane? Like, I mean, he can he can bash maybe, but then he can sprint away. I mean, that's not reliable. No, you you uh, run away the Q. You use the Q. Like the oh, enemy okay. really needs something like a lion, and then lion needs to hold off his like use one stun and then hold off with his uh, sheep. And then you can sort of like start to run away. So he has the sheep you, and it's like really complicated. So basically, he just has a fuckload of HP, and yeah, he can really hard sprint away. About him. Yeah, it's really hard to do anything about him uh, in the. Office. I also, I also find that I lose a lot to. Uh, apparently, this meta is supporting a offlane sand king. Yeah, I was about to say like sand king offlane is really really strong. Uh, you can actually. <laughs> with his uh, with his uh, passive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can you can win the entire game all by yourself. You literally don't need your team. You can win. All, I, I I just lost uh, recently. I lost the game uh, because of literally Sand King. He literally won the game all by himself. He destroyed. Were you us. carry? No, no, I wasn't. Uh, oh. The carry. It was a carry Morphling, and that's what the surprising thing is. I've actually played Morphling against the uh, Sand King. Uh, I was Morphling against the Sand King, and I thought it was kind of decent matchup. Like I didn't get. Uh, it was it was kind of <laughs> e easy to play because you can creep aggro and you can get most of the last hits, like three out of four at the very least, and you don't take that much damage because the AOE like you can stay away from it. But the guy actually died several times to him, uh, all by like it was a dual lane as well, like yeah, the support and I don't I don't know what the hell happened. So uh, yeah, it's lost the game all to Sand King, and he is winning a lot in the off lane. So. Um, He's really strong. Yeah, I'm talking about 5k, so you can imagine what you can do in the in the 2k bracket if you play Oh, it. yeah. Like, I've seen people do it. Like, I've seen people play, like, Sand King or Techies offlane and completely own the whole game. Yeah, that's Techies is another hero that... If I've, they're good at doing that. <laughs> I, I played... Um, I don't remember which carry I was playing. I think it was Juggernaut. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, there was a Techies in the offlane. Uh, unfortunately, it was a solo carry against a solo offlane. Uh, there mm -hmm. was a jungler who came and died to Techie suicide once, and uh, I don't know. It wasn't. I think it wasn't that death, but I kind of lost that late to Techies. <laughs> yeah. So it was. It's yeah. kind of hard. It is actually do you, hard. Do you know that? Like, I mean, obviously, without you even say this, you you know that I've gained a lot of ability in Dota in the last six months playing carry and like learning all the things I have. Mm. Um, I've improved quite a bit. Um. My mentality and my tilt keep me down a lot, quite a bit. Plus, like me always changing what I want to do just based off of a few losses. You know, like oh, I gotta go spend mid now, or I gotta go do this and this. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> the bottom line is, is if I adapt and learn how to play, uh, I'm I'm up against the same players. So like, if I just, you know, maybe I have to fight earlier. Maybe I have to rotate more. Maybe we have to dogpile one lane, you know, more. Uh, you know, in my stupid bracket, but like. I should learn how to adapt and and win with whatever role I want to play. You know, yeah. I mean, it might be a little harder to climb as a support, but maybe not if I'm picking like uh, um, stomp heroes like Om Omni and uh, CM or Ogre. Yeah. But um, I need to uh, go off on a tangent just for a second because I didn't fully explain. Yeah. Hold on, before you go any further, <laughs> yeah. I need you to um, understand one more thing before we continue. You might even backtrack a couple things you said, but probably not. Okay. Well, first of all, I don't mean any harm to you. Like, I, I'm not frustrated with you. I'm frustrated with this bracket. I'm frustrated with misconceptions of higher MMR levels to lower MMR, MMR levels. Like, you get a lot more of it now from playing it. But, like, when I say that you still don't 100% grasp it, like, maybe you 80% or 90% do. Like, I know that you don't. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just by, it's just even some of the things I've said, like, you've proven me wrong. But some of them you're like, oh, well, you know, and then you say it that way. But like I don't mean anything to you as a player. No, like I, I don't. I, I don't mean any. Like you're a great player. You're a five K player. You you are just you know coming to grasp and fully understanding yourself. Like what shit MMR is like. And but like I'm part of that shit MMR. I do realize that. But anyway, with that being said, um, I'm also like you know I like to soak up like so much info. And I know we only have a limited time. And so like I talk faster. I interrupt more. Uh, partly because I'm frustrated not with you, but because of, you know, the Dota stuff. Yeah. But it's also because we're running out of time and, like, I, you know, I don't want to, you know, like, I want to be able to get my points out and stuff. But, like, anyway, with now that I've said all that, uh, the, what I really wanted to say was, remember back when Echo was preaching, like, hero picks don't really matter? 
yeah. getting better at Dota matters. Yeah. Hero picks do matter, yeah. but at this level, yeah, it's it's only to a certain to a great extent. He's right at two or three k. As long as you're not picking an extremely bad pick. Look, the um, hero picks. Uh, it, they matter, but not I, like. I understand I, where Echo is coming from, right? Um, if you deserve to, well, let me. Um, before you go, let me just yeah. finish making it because I will never get to it. Um, yeah. And I'm long-winded, but like the so basically, I just wanted to tell you that my real reason for picking these, you know, 25 heroes or whatever. Um, I was still tilting a lot, and I said, look, part of the reason why I tilt is because I'm worried so much about what hero to pick, and and I'm always worried about like not having a bigger hero pool because I don't want to go and practice, you know, a bunch of heroes yeah. and waste all my time practicing the unranked when I could really just like if I could try hard enough I could work on the things I need to do while I'm playing rank and blah 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 but like I kind of went back on what Echo was saying combined with me trying to get rid of tilt and stuff and and I said I'm going to pick out these five heroes in each lane and right now I'm going to work on my toxic MMR and my own tilt and I'm basically going to go into every game saying I'm going to last pick sorry guys but I'm going to pick whatever we need Yeah, and I actually won. If you look at my recent games, uh, I started winning a lot, and then I lost some too. But I didn't really change my MMR much. But like, I lost some of my. I I I stopped. I stopped being as anxious uh, about the picks because, well, actually, if you go back to my my new hero thing, like, I'm basically. It, like in every game, I was literally like, if we needed a carry at the last pick, I'd pick Sven. If Sven was taken, I'd pick Drow. If Drow was taken, I'd pick Luna. If Luna was taken, I'd pick Jug. Mm-hmm. Same thing with mid. I'm going to pick Marana. If not, then I'll pick Zeus. Mm-hmm. But I'm like going to go down the line from the top and just not, like say, I don't care about the picks. I'm going to go in and work on my tilt and be friendly and work on getting better at my map, point, you know, improving in Dota, but just do the best that I can on that hero. Look, um, uh, but like, is that uh, okay. huh? Yeah, so yeah. like, that's part of. And I also pick these heroes because like, yeah, they they can pub stomp and they are generally good, like, somewhat non situationally. So like, I take all that out of it, and for now, I just work on my toxic MMR and pick. But like, if we can narrow it down to a better selection and get rid of some that are that are not a good idea and stuff, but I just want you to really keep in mind that that's kind of what I'm doing. But I. Now that I'm talking with you, I I do want to pick somewhat, you know, well too, you know. Yeah. No, so mean, like instead of going down from the top, if I could narrow it down into only three heroes, then I might pick, you know, whatever's best for that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, the, so I, sorry, I I'm done. I understand. I understand what Echo was saying, right? He, he right. his his logic behind it is that if you improve in general, um, you will win more games than you will lose you will have a higher than 50 percent win rate and you will slowly climb your mmr and that is true that is absolutely true but the thing is the guy he's in the 6k bracket right he's got all his he plays carry he's got supports doing what they should be doing he plays support he's got carry doing what he should be doing he plays mid he's got other four people he he's in a really good place right he he, he doesn't understand uh what it is and even if he says he does understand he doesn't know what it is. No, he doesn't. I'm not going to let you be the bad guy. Like, I love Echo, and he is brilliant, and he is awesome at Dota, and he's a good coach. No, no, but... no I'm not saying something bad about him. What no, I'm I know you're not either, but I, I agree know... that, like, he doesn't get what it's like to be in 2K. He, he doesn't know the insanity uh, that you face when you lose a game, you win a game, you lose a game, you win a game. You, lose... you can't do that. You need to have a fast track if you know you're good. Even if you... If you're not good, then okay, it doesn't matter, right? It, it's fine. Let's slowly climb. Let's get slowly better. But if you know a lot better, right? If you know, then you need to you need to get out, right? You need to get out of there, and you need and then hero picks matter. Hero picks matter for winning the majority of the game. Winning faster, yeah. Yeah, there will be games where if you pick a Sven, you are put you are making it harder for yourself to win. Yes. Playing that game as Sven will get you better knowledge of how to play Sven. It will give you a little bit of a boost uh, in your skill because now you know how to play Sven a little bit differently, 
a little bit harder uh, against a different lineup, but you still lost that minus 25 MMR, which you have to gain back by playing. Which is hard. extremely hard to gain exactly. in this bracket, and even you if you deserve to, to go up. Yeah, and then you have to win another game. You have to for every loss, you have to win two games to get slightly better. But then you will lose. Another. So it's all this. You don't want to put yourself in a bad position. You want to get out of a trench that you are in to a place where you are happy. Like right now, I'm in a very happy place. I am playing random. I played Visage, Visage the other day. I, I lost that game, but I enjoyed it playing. Visage. Well, can I can I add on to that thought? Um, yeah. When I I think I told you my history of Dota and I told probably uh, uh, D- Game Leap and everything, but when I made that one new account, the one that I never stuck with about yeah. five months ago, six months yeah. ago, it was about a month after uh, Echo was helping me. Maybe yeah. it might have been even April, um, and we started in like late, like early February with Echo. But um, I made the new account and I only picked Sven and Spectre. Okay. You know, a new account work is unranked and all that and stuff. Yeah. And I, so I tried to wait till last pick. And, and, and uh, um, the thing is, though, that when you make a new account, the first 10 to 20 games, Horrible. or no, like the first five or six, can put you at the MMR that it wants you to kind of start out at. Yeah. But the first five or six games are all completely random skill people like shit people starting to account people that are like seven like 6k want to just fuck around or even may, maybe try to get a higher mr or even sometimes um, 9k people but, making new accounts but right makes new accounts all the time but what you find is that people are generally at that level trying to win really hard uh, yeah whether they're shit or they're not and so they kind of generally most games you get into they pick a decent composition better than i get even in a 2.5k game <laughs> Because you get three or four people that are like picking what the team needs, and 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 then like trying really really hard. Everybody's not really generally either drunk or high or or you know they're trying hard. So what I found um, on that when I did that um, after five games, it placed me in very high skill bracket from normal. Yeah. And I don't say that I deserve to be there at all, mm. like as I don't, because unranked games are not the same as ranked, but. I stayed in very high skill for like two or three games, and then I stayed in high skill for like the eight or nine games that I continued to play, and then I just stopped doing it because I wanted to play on my own account. Yeah. Maybe I didn't want to succeed. I don't know. I, people uh, say I I'm think, afraid, afraid of success yeah. because I, I, uh, but like, it's not afraid of. That's a complicated thing. But anyway, like I, I, I kept playing, and I was in high skill games. But my point was is that two things. One, I was loving Dota so much. Even when I lost, I was like. This is amazing. Like everybody's doing things that I expect on the enemy team so I can anticipate things. My team's doing things right in the team fight. Like I'm shit, but I still knew what was supposed to happen. Most likely because your toxic MMR was really high. Well, that too, but I'm telling you like, no, it's, it's more. But what I found is that after about, I think the reason why I stopped is because after about 17 games on that account like i was definitely past the point of playing with as many um um smurfs and so all of a sudden i'm getting a lot of players on my team that are just like peruvian or they're not even peruvian but they're like um just randoming or or force picking a lane and not caring what their teammates do or just wanting to play ld and learn ld so basically i was starting to get mixed in with a lot of people that were ranked already because you could look at their profiles and stuff and they either had an MMR or whatever, yeah. but they were at that point picking as if they were like playing an unranked game and not like try hard. Yeah, yeah. And so the games were becoming complete shit. And it wasn't just because like I got into a higher MMR and it, it was sucking. Like it was just like I said, I don't know if I deserve I think... to be in a high skill bracket. I think I was like in about a 3,800 like I don't know a hidden MMR. But the second thing was is that like uh, well that was one that like. I don't remember the second point, but but yeah, you get my thing. Like I, I uh, after it, Cal, it kind of finds your. I think it it fast like after so many like for some people it's five games because you're consistent. Some it might be fifteen because I've made like three or four new accounts and I can, I watched it on Dota Buff. Yeah. But whether it takes five or fifteen, it gets you to that point. And then I think for a little while you're still winning or losing like a hundred every time you win or lose a game based off your KDA. But then when you get up to like 50 or 100 games, I think you're, you're hitting MMR is at that point only moving like 25 apart. Um, Does that make sense? 
But the bottom line is, is I got to the point where people were not giving a shit about the game anymore as soon as the Smurfs started disappearing. And so I was like, fuck this. But in the end, the real point was, is that I really enjoyed playing like you enjoy playing in your 5K games. Let me tell you something. Does that make sense? Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Let me tell you something. I I told this to you a long time ago as well. Uh, Not a long time ago. A while back as well. I'm going to say this again. I think you should make a new account. And I definitely think it's going to take about 150 or 200 games. But I'm playing 240 a month. Uh, yeah, so it's going to take you a month maybe to calibrate Not the even. new account. Uh, the biggest thing is that right now, okay, uh, if I'm telling you you belong under 3.5k MMR, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just, okay, sure, I'm I'm a bit like, uh, I've got a better eye for it, but it, you know, it's not the same thing as you actually calibrating a new account and actually seeing that account calibrate to 3.5k or 4k, and then you're playing games and you're at a 50% MMR. I can guarantee you that you come back to this same um, account after that, and you will easily float above to float up to the same MMR. Because uh, my head will be in the right, like, because I'll believe in myself. Yeah, exactly. It, it, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know what the real reason is. The same thing happened to me. The same thing happened to my friend. I was 4K. I was uh, 3.9, 4.1K. I was stuck there. I made a new account. Uh, we played. We both made new accounts. We both played 200 games. We both played every almost every single game, joint party games. Um, uh, we both calibrated our accounts. We both calibrated five, six hundred MMR above us. Uh, we both went back to our accounts, and within like a couple of weeks, we both literally bo- jumped up in our MMR and came to. You know what? I think there's two parts of it. One part you start. You, um, I think that. If you do any player who, whether they're two, three, four, five, or six K mm-hmm. on their main account, if they go make a new account, because you're playing with a lot of people who are just like whatever, and they're like, I think it's easier to win on ranked games than it is ranked. If you, it, yeah, definitely. bottom line is so I think the MMR system's not broken at all, like with making a new account, but for some reason, and I've seen it happen to many other people other than myself always myself as well you almost always if you spam your favorite heroes and you don't just stick around on that new account you you play your best heroes maybe five or six of them maybe even eight of them like you always come out at a higher mmr than you what you really should be when you start playing ranked games That's good. you always drop back down a little bit but the point is is that when while you're playing those and you get up to that mmr you're you're playing with then you go into ranked games or even maybe leading up to playing that ring games, you're playing with better people and you actually get better at Dota. But the second thing is, is when you're playing on your main and you're tilting and you're watching people do like really shitty stuff and you know yeah. that like, and, and it, not only that you think that you should be a higher MMR, but like, let's say that person really should be higher MMR. Yeah. And so, but, but even so, if they haven't experienced that higher MMR, in somewhere in their mind, they're tilting even more because they're watching these people do stupid shit. And somewhere in their mind, they're going, they're doubting themselves and going, do I, am I actually this bad? Am I as bad as them? Am I, do I suck? Yeah. And so that plays on your head. Yeah, And exactly. it, not only it makes you play worse, but it also makes you tilt and play <laughs> even further worse. Yeah. So I definitely like, think you should try and make a new account and see see how it goes. Uh, at worst, well, at worst, you stick at the same MMR, but you get like another two hundred games of practice in. So that's you know. I I I think for some reason I'm so hesitant to do it. I think I'm just stubborn. I don't want to give up. Like I I, I spent like two hundred dollars on items on this account. I think I can probably transfer a bunch of them, but not all of them. I don't know. I don't think you can transfer. The only, as I said, the only reason like why immortals and stuff. Or well, yeah. sorry. Some of the items aren't transferable, but the only reason why I do want you to do do that experience is so that you can see. You know what? If you calibrate down the same MMR that you are right now, then at least you know that you need some serious. I need to improve. Yeah. Whether it's my tilt or whether it's something. But here's the thing, dude. I finally, and I'm like ninety percent sure, like like more than I ever have before. I can actually feel it that like I really am. I am ready to start dealing with this tilt like more than like i've always tried to let's let's improve on this 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 and this and this while working on my tilt yeah but i am finally ready and picking just these little small hero pools to stick with yeah is helping me already i can tell like i'm i just have this like like i don't worry about any of that 
I just get in the game and I try to be cool with my teammates and, and, and not worry about whether I, I win too much. And I'm not trying to improve on anything right now. Just on my tilt. Yeah. That's it. That's and good. um, But like if we can narrow it down to like three or four heroes in each one that I have reasonably like, let's say I, I narrow it down to three or four heroes in each um, role. Yeah. Except for carry. You, you know, you, you think I can have more than just three or four in my carry, you know, because I, 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 I am good enough to do that, I think. Plus, you're gonna be playing that a lot, so it's about. All right, you know what? Uh, after saying all this, can you just tell me straight up, like, what three heroes do you want me to have in mid, off lane, and support? After hearing all my arguments, hearing everything. Well, as we said, put P over here. Uh, Mirana... Okay, hold on, let me move it. And but you th still think if I am forced to play mid, and I think it's gonna be a great PA game mid, just go, but yeah, still yeah, pick yeah, it. Mid. Yeah. Also, same so with Luna. Where... You think you can have a Luna mid, go for Luna mid. If you have a Jug mid, you can go Jug mid, go for Jug mid. If you can go for uh, Draw mid, go for Draw mid. If you Actually, go for, uh, hey, um, can you do me a favor? Do me a favor and stop screen share. I'm going to screen share my screen, and then you just I'm going to move things around while you tell me. Yeah, okay. Uh, It'll be easier, I think. And I'll listen to you talk. So um, yeah, go ahead and stop screen share. All right, go for it. And then I don't think I've ever done this before. Um... Can you see me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Ten seconds yeah, to go. Can. All right, so um, would you put where would you put Jug like right where I, I mean PA like right in, have... in my line of like I still want a preference of heroes to pick from top to bottom if if the game allows it. Otherwise, I'll skip forward and go to a different hero. Uh, by the way, Jeremy, do you have uh, do you have full screen enabled or are you have you brought uh, uh, I have full screen, I think. That is so strange. Oh, can you not see it? No, no, go go into settings. Just let me see it really quickly. Go into settings, uh, video. What? Why does it not work for me then? Um, I have dual monitors on, so maybe something, something's weird, wacky, uh, and, and, and I got it by accident. I don't that know. That might be it. That might be not the dual monitors. Might be it. Anyway, uh, yeah. So. Would you put yeah. it right about where I put them, or where in the hierarchy uh, of where to choose? Fine. I think that's. You fine. wouldn't. I think you would you would just skip drow and Luna every game unless it looks like it supports it. Oh well, the drow anyway, right? Like I think, uh, Luna, I think Luna as well. I think I would put the uh, PA. Uh, actually, I think I would put the Juggernaut and Slark together uh, underneath the uh, Sven. Well, I just need to practice some Sven, I think, and then uh, and then what would you do? Like um, no, the PA underneath. I want to get good at Morphling, dude. Like I saw someone spamming a mid, and he was he was obviously a Smurf, but I was watching him and like I can do this. And I played a um a ranked game mid with Morph, and other than a few mistakes, which would have made me snowball more, I actually did well. Yeah, he needs too much practice. Morph needs he he's actually really strong, but he needs a lot of practice to actually get good. So um, I think keep Morph at the bottom. Uh, Nobody just so that you can get some practice war. sessions in, but... Everybody likes to win. What do you want me to do, then? <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. So, underneath the, uh, so, uh, underneath PA, I want, uh, I want Spectre and PA the same, please. And then, um, uh, Luna and Drow are with the, underneath these guys. And then, um, yeah, Luna and Drow both together. I guess. <laughs> oh, and then and then uh, Morphling can be. I'll straighten them up later. <laughs> yeah. well, I actually, actually kind of like this, dude. I like this. Yeah. I'm okay. glad we switched screens. Uh, this helps. And then you um, take the uh, OD out. Um, and uh, those. You are just want me to get them all the way away? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, this way? Yeah. Okay. You don't have uh, that much that much uh, time, dude. You're, you're still recording, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, right. you can see that. Oh, that's right. Shit. Well, we'll go back to the. We'll have you. Uh, I'll. I'll uh, copy it and send it to you afterwards. All right. So you can pull it up. Yeah. No worries. So on your screen, so people, because people are gonna want to see what happened. Um. All right. What else? All right. Uh, now you're off lane. Uh, I. I don't want to say anything about Underlord. So the rest of the three. I can win MMR with him. I know I can because I. I don't play him well. I started to get the grasp of him, but I yeah. literally won like. Three out of four games or something. But. I would say uh, increase the size of Void as the same as these guys. 
and keep uh, uh, SK small just to practice and see if you can get to practice him and if you can get to play him well. Wait, who? Uh, Underlord? SK, SK. Oh, yeah, I think I'll have fun with him. Um, yeah, so maybe can, like... Uh... If you can play SK well, if you can learn SK, uh, then yeah, go for go for SK. SK is, uh, SK is great. Would you say that's... By the way, I have the most experience with offlane and support and carry than any other role in the game. Um, so most of these heroes come naturally to me in the offlane. I like offlane. Um, I would argue that maybe with these heroes, I could just spam offlane in ways MMR faster than playing carry, but I, I'd rather not. I, I don't know. So I'm just saying that like, I, can, I can learn these heroes well because I already know the offlane role decently. Okay. Um, plus it's kind of easy in this bracket. Um, so what, how, how do you want me to move this around? Um, so yeah, keep, keep the, uh, I don't know. I think all at the same level, <laughs> maybe, maybe just pick them situation the best I can. Uh, SK may be lower than everybody else. Uh, but otherwise, um, like just practice SK. If you think you can do it, then do it. Uh, otherwise just remove him from your pool. I'd like to, I'm going to do it. Well, like these guys, what I'll do is, uh, these will be my unranked games that I'm working on. Okay. Um, probably work on him. I need to work on these three guys. Uh, would you say the this order here? Or uh, <sighs> I'm gonna have to get a lesson from you on Zeus later I, on. I think I, I think I all fuck. three together, all three at the same time, because it's really situational that you're picking them. It's it depends on the situation that you're picking them in. So um, you never apart from maybe Zeus. Oh. Zeus would you say top. go ahead sorry actually you know what mirana can fit into every situation as well uh it's only alchemist that really needs to have a carry who's not you know super farm intensive carry so like that yeah something like that yeah would you say that i'm missing midwise though like is there one hero that could patch what these three can't do it would probably be like jug or pa yeah. or something like that. oh shit shit a... <laughs> the game ended the bot game ended yeah. I can't save it. Oh I, my god. I'm um, screenshot. I was about to tell you that. Wouldn't it be funny if this bot game just ended right now? Uh, Shit, here. Uh, let me just load it up real quick. I'll put the screenshot on my other screen. Oh my god. Whoops. You didn't... I'm, we're not putting that on. <laughs> my brother... I put that up as a joke when my brother came over one day. Um, Hold on when he was visiting and I just never changed it. Uh, let's see, I can file a copy. Don't save it in any port folder, Jeremy. Right. Uh, let's see. It's fine, it's not, it's not even recording on your screen, so it's good. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. Uh, I'm putting this on my other monitor real quick. But everybody heard stuff. Now they everybody heard what? They the the vinge it was the vinge uh vengeful spirit uh sure. quite 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 a well that's, that's well uh drawn picture. Um I see. Says. Hold on a second. What we do here is uh <laughs> no bots. I think. Oh, the creeps eventually get out of equilibrium and end it. There was no bots. Yeah. Oh. All right. I'm sorry this is taking so long, dude. No worries. You're like helping me so much today. You have no I freaking idea. All right. Um. I can actually do this. Well, I could better just do it right quick. I'm not gonna organize it really well though. Wow. Okay. Sorry, I'm nervous because we've taken so long, dude. Um, can you see my screen again? Yeah, I don't like. I, I don't like waiting on me. Um. I think that's what we did, right? Uh, let's see. I'm trying. All right, what about support? So, yeah. Okay, for support, remove the uh, roster, remove the 
I agree. Oh, he is such a high win rate in all brackets. Yeah, but he's not a support hero. He's a mid hero. Or a carry. You you mid-hero. like these? What order do you like him? I think Omni is just a way to raise think, MMR. I think Omni and, and Maddie, Vengeful awesome. are at the top. I think um, you should have. So basically, whether I got to babysit a hard carry that doesn't really like like a Spectre or someone that like doesn't have a lot of laning potential and then maybe Venge would be more like like a kill lane or like uh yeah. harass harass or something. Yeah. And I think you should have a disruptor in there uh, instead of a lich. My god, I think you're right. Lich is kind of a stupid hero. Yeah, lich you don't need. Uh put put a disruptor instead of a lich that'll be better. Look I I put them all in a circle so that I could find them faster. I never never used to do that. It's pretty cool, huh? How? What? I put all of these extras in a circle so if i go like this and go to grid and let's say dazzle and go back to grid it highlights it so i can find them faster when they were all i used to have them stacked in on one one square in the corner oh okay see how see so you don't have to unstack everything to find it well i don't stack them anymore. smart i must say uh, i have them in the side because yeah, situation you might. i do want to pick those heroes so you're such a good player though man <laughs> i think that it's more of that Sometimes those heroes can actually do so well that even yeah. though I don't have practice with them, it's almost good to it's almost better to pick them yes. rather than let them go. I um, agree. I think the higher MMR you go, the more even more important that is probably, especially if you're not like the carrier mid. Yeah, but because like, like you, all you really need to do is understand how that particular position is supposed to work and understand at least the basics of the, how the hero is supposed to work. But um, there are some heroes that I would never pick, like Kunkka. I would pretty much never pick Kunkka. Like Brewmaster, I would never pick Chen. I would never ever pick uh, Meepo. I'm not gonna play unless I, I have a deer or something. <laughs> so um, you know, these here Visage, I just picked that one time because I was just wanna troll some people and have some fun. But other than that, I don't play micro heroes. I'm not. I'm not a micro person. No, I don't really care for it. I had some fun because I thought, like, I think my team was carrying me. This. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I was like, okay, no, I'm not that good at it. Um, so what do you think so far? What do you think? What should we change? All right. So, and then in the jungle heroes, uh, as we said, like, Lifestealer, uh, Wraith King, put them on the other side. Uh, remove an I'm just gonna remove them then. Well, actually, I can play Life Stealer very well. I, I I don't know. I guess there could be a game where I could. I don't play Wraith King that great, so you think I should just not practice them and practice Morphling yeah, and Wraith Sark? King is great, dude. What are you talking about? Wraith King is great. I said I'm not great at him. Uh, you how how are you how is anybody not great at Wraith King? He's okay, not, fine not, then. <laughs> like I get better at tread switching with like I'm good at tread switching with Sar- uh, Sarter. It, uh, um. Sven, so Slark, I think I'd be fine with it if I just practice them a little and like get used to like you know the different places I gotta switch it to. But um, so you would say, do what? Just keep these down here for situational? Yeah, yeah, situational. Okay, because they are high win rates. I think I got all the high win rates right here right now yeah. in Ursa. <laughs> but so Ursa, what? Legion Commander is good in my bracket. I'd like to keep him. <laughs> yeah, like, keep Legion Commander. Keep Legion Commander, but remove the Enigma. What? Yeah, really? yeah, definitely, definitely. He's so amazing, though. Uh, like, anybody that knows how to play him well, like, smashes in my bracket on my team. What are you going to do with Enigma when everybody else can't Is do anything Is it stupid? Else? Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, All right. you can go and black hole five people, and then what? True. You would pick... Uh... I guess Disruptor for a kill lane, Ogre for... It's really going to be kind of like this, isn't it? Or would you put it like... I, I would put Disruptor and Venge as the same situation and Ogre or more like when you uh, when you think that any other support is just dead meat, uh, just pick Ogre. Or when you don't really know what the hell to do, just pick Ogre. Uh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a little freaking knee freak, so I'm gonna have to fix this later. But, no um, what, what would you change then? Would you add any of these guys to my pool? 
obviously they might be i might be losing to them because they're great in this bracket or it might be because they're yep. good against the heroes that i was spamming or it might be just because they take advantage of my weak points as a player I think so maybe they're not good if I pick them. Some of them are really good in the 2K bracket. Uh, but I think that Ricky should be in your pool. Uh, no, no, not this guy. Yeah, remove that shit. Uh, Ricky, experiment <laughs> with him. See how it goes. See if you can play well with him. You know, I, I was having fun on this guy, and I played him a bunch, and I was starting to get better at him. Maybe I should... You know, he... he, he you know, Alchemist kind of... He carries... But he's not like the traditional like gank right click kind of carry like SSF could be right. So like he might patch yeah. what these three can't do. SF. This guy doesn't really uh, he kind of gank. He SF. This guy goes looking for kills and yeah, and... I don't think SF is great. Really? Um, right. Keep keep him there if you want to, but practice with him, see how it goes, and then and then decide. Oh yeah, this is my practice heroes. <laughs> right here not tinker though no it's too much practice yeah all right man so what do you think where do we go now is that about it for now or yeah i think so i think you i have let's remove let's see what really yeah yeah, yeah yeah he relies on the team too much huh trash, trashy room trashy room he can't he can't solo win games uh, there's not much he can do he used to be able to when he was a fucking race car. Yeah. yeah. I actually won 23 games in a row on a new account. <laughs> cool. I'm not joking. Like, it was on this account. Um. Wow, this is cool, man. All right, so I, I, you're pretty confident in me just sticking with this? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Cool, dude. Don't touch this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else you've got. Yeah, let me just have a quick look. Um... I guess you could have added Lion to your support pool. Lion is really strong. I, uh, I find I find that like he falls off though, doesn't he? No, 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 no way. Lion doesn't fall off. Nope. I think he's always. Good. I think he could be. Uh, he. I like playing him. He's fun, but I feel like I lose a lot on him. You know why? Maybe. Maybe I just get killed too much. Like maybe, maybe my positioning sucks in Dota. So. Maybe. What am I doing? <laughs> you don't want me to learn OD. He's like kind of like SF, right? I mean, except he's got a little more OD, offense and defense. OD is kind of. But weak. he win. He wins so much in my bracket when people play him. Yeah. You you're going off that experience you had with him, where yeah. it was like really no, I, really hard. I, like you can't. You don't have any comeback farm potential, like the do you? The thing like, with OD is that he is not good at just fighting early on. He needs. A few items. He does need a few items to. So basically, farm. he's not fast at farming, no, but he also wants to kill heroes. So if he gets behind, yeah, he doesn't he, get a kill in lane, or he gets a, like he doesn't do really well in lane, then he's just like blah. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like SF. That, I think my experience. Oh, I think farm my farm experience with OD is a little bit uh, uh, skewed because because um, I was up against a brewmaster and I literally got nothing out of the lane. It was horrible. Uh, Brewmaster at any level is going to destroy the mid lane just because he's going to make sure that the enemy doesn't farm. Um, so that that's that was the issue with me, my experience with him. So maybe okay. my experience isn't exactly the best to go off of um, with OD. Still, I think if that does happen, like if you are able to, if you slightly lose the mid matchup, uh, especially again with you, who doesn't have that much experience in the mid lane or isn't really well versed in the uh, mid matchup and how to play mid and all that, so I think it's uh, not a great idea for you to go with him in the mid lane. Okay. Not with OD. Not with OD, no. But SF would probably be better, wouldn't it? I SF would be better. Like he can catch back up and farm if he has a bad lane, or you can yeah, farm the yeah. he can farm the jungle fast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. SF SF can catch up really quickly and easy. Yeah, it's super easy. Actually, you know what? I have fun on him. That I don't know why, but I do. So with who? Cool man. SF. Uh, SF. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Something I like about it is like just outplaying noobs with my raises. I mean, I I, I got outplayed a couple times too. When I'm forced to not, I'm not ever picking them unless I'm last picking again, though, because because 
they always just pick someone who can like right click a lot harder than me. Mm. And then I'm just like, fuck. But I don't know. All right, cool. Are you trying to leave? Are you? Are you? No. Huh? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, listening. Oh no, I'm. I don't know what else to say right now. That's a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was I looking for before? I, I started to look for something, and then I realized that I was digging when I could have just done my little trick. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. No, you recommended a support, I think. Oh, um, Lion. Yes, I think I'll put him in there, because he's probably more offensive than all of these guys, right? Yeah, definitely. Lion is the so, most offensive. Plus, if my carry picks my... Oh, my friend Jean's on. I want to play with her. All right. Yeah, I think we could stop there, but I'm going to um, okay. uh, uh, send this to you really quick so you can put it on the video so people can actually see what the hell happened. Do you want to just pop it up on on your on your screen share looking back towards me again? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop screen sharing. Yep. Uh, Gold is a <laughs> All right, here we go. So, uh, send it. On, send me. On. Oh, you took a screenshot of it, or you want me to send it to you? No, this is this is the previous one. Oh, okay, hold on. Your bottom tower ain't send it to me on uh, Steam. Hate to say it, I am. I I don't know why this takes a minute to pop up. Oh, how do I send it to you on Steam? Like up? Do I upload it? The other fellas aim uh, no, just send me the... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just send it to me on the Skype. Uh, the imager... Uh... Friends yeah. only upload? To smash no, the imager post. Yours. How do I do that? Yeah. What? No, the imager post. The, the imager. Upload it to imager. Oh, yeah, I will. I just... For some reason, it doesn't come up right away when I try to um, enlarge it. And then um, it lets me save it, but... Like when I when I click it, it doesn't come up into the. I don't know why. I'm sorry. It, no it's happened twice today already. It just. Yeah, you can't see what I'm doing, but like I'm click no. like when you close Dota, it comes up with the screenshot uploader, and then like I'm clicking on it and nothing's, it's not enlarging and coming up into a bigger file. Fuck, man. Yeah, I'm gonna do show on disk. Maybe that'll work. Uh, shit. So many accidental screenshots. I didn't realize I had this. All right, here we go. Make a copy. I used to be so much faster on our computer. Um. Um. Da -da 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 -da. Newest heroes. Okay, then I go on to Inger. I hope no one's waiting on you, man. I'm sorry. No, no, no one's waiting on me. That's fine. I, I'm going to owe you like four sessions now. I think it's three and a half. Yeah. I owe you one, and then this is two and a half today, right? Or do we go more than two and a half? No, you owe me one and a half, and this is two. Well, didn't we go to like two and a half hours today or three? No, or no something? this is uh, literally we just popped into just two hours and some minutes right now. All right. I'm not going to look. I'm going to... I'll trust you on that. Mm. Let's see. Add another image, maybe? Ah, here we go. I think this works. Here, I'm going to paste it. All right. Are you still uh, recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your new program lets you go more than uh, or more than an hour or whatever? I, I reset after an hour. Oh, nice. I stopped it and uh, started playing again. The whole world knows what I look like now. How? Just kidding, I don't care. <laughs> my, it's my Dota profile. Or it used to be my Dota profile. Um, uh, so... They'll know what I look like when I become famous. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> uh, when, when you become famous from what, Jeremy? You have famous to, at coaching. You have to be a bit more <laughs> precise. Uh Hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing with uh, Purge one day. That's all I want. I want to get I want to get in a game with Sir Action Slacks, and then I'm gonna go get my like go do my real life again. <laughs> I've never played with Action. Oh, you oh, right. No, dude, I'm a shit fucking two two point eight 
Okay. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about to change, though. I don't know if you kind of sense that about to happen, but I I know it is. Yeah, yeah, man. man. Yeah, man. Not like in a gambling go way, like, oh, account. I'm going to get better. But... Go make a new account, dude. First make a new account. I, I, I'm actually going to – I have the next nine days off. Mm. Um, I promise myself I'm not going to get frustrated or tilted. I'm just going to enjoy doing <laughs> any heroes or whatever. But um, if I don't seem to budge still, I'm going to make a new account. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Actually, should I just go back to that other account that I was already playing? It has like 15 games on it, and it's in high skill bracket right now. Or should you think I should just start an entirely new one? Just yeah, for the hell? 15 games. Screw it. Just make a new account altogether. That was six months ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just just make a new account altogether. That's completely fine. Yeah, like I know from what I've even from what I've learned and like without any coaching, like I've become like learned so much. Player, yeah. 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 Absolutely. 